Hello there. Uh, welcome back to Adventure Game Nights. Um, nice to see a whole bunch of you in the chat today. Uh, we are, of course, continuing the remastered Salmon Max season. How is everybody doing? How is everybody doing? It has been... Uh, I've been working on video stuff today. Got uh, some editing done on my Monkey Island 2 video. And uh, I also finished writing a script for a Christmas video that I'm working on. And thankfully, it's actually a short script. I'm actually making a video which isn't going to be like ha over half an hour long again, which I'm so happy about. In fact, I think it'll be around 20 minutes or less. I'm so happy about that. <laughs> I just want to make a small project again. And I think my cat wants to say hi. Where are you? Oh, there she is. Right. Oh, there she is. Oh, oh she's a baby. We've even got a, an emote of her, uh, if you're either a subscriber or you want to unlock it. So, yeah. She makes little grunting noises, too. That's just the kind of noises she makes. The ginger ninja. She she is very nimble, but also quite clumsy. Uh, earlier today, she tried to jump on the bed and then just jumped into my kneecap as w instead when I was walking by. And then she's like, she was completely fine and she didn't care, but I was just like, why did you jump into my kneecap? She's silly. She's a silly, clumsy baby. Oh, She'll probably ask to be out the room in a minute, but uh, either way. Yep, more Salmon Max remaster today. Because um, I'm the bee's knees. Fair enough. All the cat's pajamas. Because I was wearing my pajamas at the time. It's <laughs> Fair enough. Um, Alright, Salmon Max saved the world. We are on episode 3, which is called The Mole, The Mob, and The Meatball. And it's about the Toy Mafia. So that's, uh, you guys will see. Yes. <laughs> Opened your max action figure today. Oh, I need to pick those up. Um, at some point, I need to remember to pick those up before they actually get sold out. Like, that's just something that I need to do. But then again, there's also the, um, the Monkey Island, uh, anthology, which I need to get as well. Oh, boy. There's a lot to buy right now. Um, either way. Uh, fave episode? I think this one's alright, yeah. I don't know if it's my favourite. It has one of the, it has the best song in the game, though. So, uh, let's just get into it. Uh, Cogs in Motion, of course. The best song. Um, can you post a picture here? I think so, yeah. I don't think I've got links disabled, so I'm pretty sure you can do that. Alright, should I go on to here? This should... There we go. All right. But it's all set up ready to go anyway, so... Episode 3. I actually went back um, after the stream last time, and I um, got the achievement for that first episode. I mean, I'm, trying to go, I'm trying to go for all the achievements as I'm going through. And I think I know how to do the one for this episode as well. Episode 4 is your personal favorite. Yeah, I like Episode 4 the best as well. Ooh. I do love this intro. This intro is it's just, it's just so perfect. I've, I've been listening to the, uh, the new theme. Have I been looking at Simple Claws every episode? I haven't actually. I keep, I keep forgetting to do stuff like that. Yeah, the new song is such a bop. Like, from like season three, you can tell that they were getting really good at doing intros. Um, and it's transferred over, and like they've done like an absolute, you know, banger of an intro for this one. God, the the, the change there. Oh, when they go from like the sort of monochromatic mode into the actual full color, that's so cool. I love it. Yeah, it references the E3 trailer, which is really cool. Hiya, Sam. Good news, Max. I think I just gave birth to a bouncing baby hernia. <laughs> I got it! I got it! Ow! <laughs> Hello. Yes, Commissioner? Holy cap wearing catfish flopping a crime beat. We're on our way. Yeah, I'm really curious to see how season two and three look. Did he get the notes? Season I two is probably very yes, similar. But he to said this. to stop carving them into the suspects. He can't read them without his bifocals. <laughs> what if I just write bigger? Forget that, Max. 
We're after the most infamous organized crime outfit in the city, the Toy Mafia. Oh boy. The cutthroat killers with no respect for human life, but an odd predilection for delightful children's toys? The same. <laughs> I love those guys. The commissioner has reason to believe that the Toy Mafia's secret headquarters are located in the one place no one would ever suspect. Teddy Bear's mafia-free Playland and Casino. Devilish. The shallowest place on Earth? Oh, boy! <laughs> well, it's not going to be all laughs and dyspepsia, little chum. It's a rescue op. The commissioner sent an undercover mole to investigate, but he hasn't reported in weeks. Our job is to make contact with the mole and see if he needs help. Is he a large, star-shaped mole, or more of a beauty mark? No idea, Max. To find him, we're supposed to give the code phrase, does the carpet match the drapes? And what'll he say? <laughs> He'll say, well, I never, then smack me across the face. <laughs> Sounds great. Let's do this. Perfect. They're shooting out the window. Uh... Oh, no. Fluffy, no. Well, we just shot someone's dog. No? Okay. Oh, my God. The cat. I told you the cat would want to be out the room. She wants to leave whenever she's not getting the... Like full attention. Also, in regards to what you're saying, Tenwin, um, I would actually say that Half-Life Alex is basically Half-Life 3. That's that's my hot take. <laughs> it does advance the story. It's only by a little bit, like by like 30 seconds, but it does advance the story. Um, it isn't officially happening, Whee! that's true. Alright, there's an uh, ace of spades down here that we're gonna take. Hey, an ace. Hey, Toby. An extra How card you up your sleeve and never hurts. Except when the other guy catches you with it and decides to riddle every inch of your body with high caliber bullets and then dump your mutilated corpse in an empty field. That is a yeah, bummer. Except then. Jimmy Two Teeth. Fence. It's a mm. sad day when hardworking rodents have to make their living as a freestanding <laughs> form of enclosure. Uh, I think that's fence in the buys and sells stolen goods sense of the word. Beat it! You're getting in way of my customer. What customers? Have a cold, otherwise good. Ah, uh, those colds are pesky this time of year. So yeah, I guess every episode, uh, this closet gets updated with uh, new, um, like, objects relating to each case. Uh, so now there's the hypno bear from that we fried this on the set of Myra. This scrap serves as a touching reminder of the fun we had at WARP TV. I've determined that whether for food or for sport, I just really enjoy frying things. I wonder what limited runs rumored uh, some Max Collection will contain. I, I wonder that as well. Um, I'm really excited because they did say they were going to do something with Salmon Max, but we'll have to see what it is. Um, also, ten minutes. No, that wasn't the same rat. The rat we blew up was actually uh, like a generic rat that was just in uh, Sam's dream. That's Jimmy Tootie, who lives in the rat hole down there, and he's like a little criminal. <laughs> Okay. Oh! Hold on! That billboard, the Museum of Mostly Natural History! That's from Season 3! That's from the Devil's Playhouse! Like, um... Episode 3 of, um... The third season, you go to that, uh that museum and I think that billboard is actually there somewhere as well that's really cool very Frankie and season three Frankie's a cool rat all right let's go see what Sybil's up to in this one then there's some more posters down here first though I'm gonna go have a look at them yeah Monsieur Paperweight spend the model championship is coming up I like when they do the sudden death round with the Molotov cocktails <laughs> Do you like taking in some pro wrestling? I think I've seen that one. We should go to Switzerland sometime, Max. <laughs> nah, they always jip you on the cheese. It's like half air. <laughs> hey, it's the Indie Angst Film oh, Festival. Oh, because Swiss cheese has holes in it. Show that second movie over and over again. All right. Dead end sign. Dead end. One way, dead end. Street oh, yeah. signs are such fitting metaphors for the human condition. That's the old Max Voice bleeding through. Prescriptions. <laughs> Alright, so... What did it say that she is? I can't quite... I can never remember. I think she's a witness in this one, isn't she? Professional witness. It is quite TF2, like the style, King Boss. Which is uh, why one of the first cross-promotional items was uh, Salmon Max... 
uh, Devil's Playhouse. <laughs> oh no. Kiwi has donated one pound. <sighs> okay. Kiwi asked me uh, how much it would take uh, for me to say a specific thing if he donated a certain amount. And I said, for one pound, I would say, nya. There you go. I don't actually remember what the second one was, and I'm hor I can't I'm horrified to remember. <laughs> How are you doing, Kiwi? Hello, Sam. Hello, Max. Hey, it's our favorite short attention span careerist. This time I found the job for me. I've become a professional trial witness. <laughs> uh, the lighting is like much darker in here for this episode, which is really cool actually. It's an it's a cute detail. What exactly is a professional trial witness? Oh, it's great! We give dramatic testimonies, sequester in ritzy hotels, and order room service in the name of truth and justice. It almost sounds like you're enriching yourself at the expense of this country's overcomplicated legal system. Do you have a problem with that, Mr. Freelance Police? Yeah, why didn't we think of it? Okay, interesting uh, choice. What led you to decide to become a professional witness? Publishing the Alien Love Triangle Times it's taught me a lot the about the truth, cafe. you know? I don't remember what the it is word for word, though. Out there? Exactly. And then one day Actually, I, no, I think called I for it. jury duty, and the rest is history. All right. What's your next career going to be? Oh, there is no next career. I'm sticking with trial witnessing for good. She's not. <laughs> no, seriously. Any ideas about your next cockamamie profession? I resent that. Do you have your first case yet? No, but I'm waiting for a call from the district attorney. He says he's got something I'd be perfect for. Ooh. You don't feel uncomfortable getting a case first and then being a witness for it? Not at all. You see, the problem with most trials is that crimes are witnessed by someone who's unprepared for what's going to happen, or who doesn't have sufficient training or skills to accurately remember or relate what happened. With my background and widely varied skill set, I'm perfect. That makes sense. Should I be afraid? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Just the, oh, you can ask this in, with everybody in this, <laughs> in this, uh, in this episode. It's great. Does the carpet match the drapes? Interior decorating was like eight months ago. I'm a trial witness now. Yeah, everyone has different responses. <laughs> Isn't trial witnessing a trifle dangerous? Oh no, we're protected by the truth. Okay then. We'll be back, Sybil. Bye, boys. Keep one eye on the truth. Uh, her her job will once again be relevant. Oh, actually, the the we need to have a look at the uh. Closet. Anything in here? You can't seem to hold on. All right. Uh. Okay. New lighting is yeah. The new lighting is just great in general. It's like probably my favorite part. Whee! So good. Uh, let's go see Bosco. Oh, hold on. Let's go look at the newspaper. The Alien first. Love Rectangle Post. I had no idea there was such fierce competition among Alien <laughs> Love Polygon tabloids. Myra Stump shocks crowd with new hairstyle. Wow, talk about a slow day for news. I don't talk about the news, Sam. I make it. All right, let's go see Bosco. Okay, wait. Oh, we need to look at the uh, uh, the gumball machine afterwards, actually. Hey, Bosco. Nice flapjack. Son of God and Blue. Who is this, Bosco? Hey, guys, it's me, Bosco. Oh, wow. No. <laughs> but you may call me Jean Francois Bandepart, the new way French anarchist. I believe they changed that line. Oh, carrot juice. <laughs> carrot juice, carrot juice, carrot juice. <laughs> Thank you, Toby, for the 60 bits and the carrot juice. Carrot juice, carrot juice, carrot juice. So yeah, this is one thing that I, I, I've i heard was changed. Um, I believe the original name was something like Jean-Francois Sissy Pants. Um, the cowardly French anarchist. So it, it was something like that. And they've changed it to... I, I don't really know if that if it, the old one was that offensive, but if they wanted to change it, then I think that's up to them. The scripting mishap that no one caught. They plan to fix it. Okay. So, Bosco, why'd you get Frenchified? They saw right through my British disguise. I don't know how they did it, but they found me. Who? The Mafia. 
the toy mafia. They've got it in for me. Take a number, guys. <laughs> can't. What do you mean you can't support a developer? They didn't lie, though, did they? I think that all those accusations are ridiculous. Unless you just, you know, pretend it to be those people on the Steam forums. <laughs> what manner of nightmarish atrocities has the Toy Mafia committed against you? Nothing. Yet. Ah, but I know what they are planning. And it is terrible! Are they planning to tie you down, tape your eyelids open, and turn on the 24-hour Midtown Cowboys channel? Oh, God. Well, not that bad. I have reason to believe they are planning to deliver something to my store. Oh. Another delivery conspiracy? What could a band of ruthless toy mongers possibly want to put in here? I don't know. Uh, but it is no matter. They will never be able to deliver anything to my store. Or well, my name is not Jean-Francois Benderpad. But your name's not Jean-Francois Sissy Pants. Ah. Shh, they don't that's that's know the that. mishap. I get it. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's kind of an in inconsistency, isn't it? They're, sh they're probably trying to find a way to fix that. Because obviously they didn't record, re-record all the lines. It just uh, boss goes with a new voice actor. What's keeping the toy mafia from making a delivery? Well, for one, I am watching always. They will never mm. sneak past me. Yeah, just like Wizard couldn't sneak past you. <laughs> and two, even if they do get past hey, me, should. I got a fail safe. It's the greatest invention the world has seen since b -tans. I call it the Bosco Tech Anti-Delivery System. So b -tans? What's the acronym for that? <laughs> uh, also b -tans. It is a b -tans Part D. Right. How does b -tans Part D work? First is the Anti-Delivery Camera. It keeps a massive photo recognition database of every inconvenient item I store. How completely impractical! If anything is placed in the stores that the anti-delivery camera does not recognize, it is put out on the streets. Vive la France! Yeah, the Steam reviews are an absolute mess. Um, last night I saw they were like mostly positive, which was really frustrating, because it's like... You're really going to vote it down because of that? Uh, but now it's back up to very positive, I think, so... thing is, they, they, they chose to remove some of the, or change some of the jokes because they were no longer comfortable with, um, like, some of the lines that were said. And they were like, well, we've got a chance to, you know, make it how we want to make it now, so we're going to change them. It's completely their choice, and I think people are getting worked up over nothing. It's stupid. We want to buy something. Oui, oui, monsieur. <clears throat> what do you got? Oh la la. Behind the counter, I have the latest in Bosco Tech innovation. A device, non pareil au chocolat. Is that good? Oui, oui. This I call a miniature listening device. It yeah, it's really not worth getting worked up about. Under any chapeau. What's it do? It listens. You can yeah, they subtitle is horrible. Your accent. Secret <laughs> conversations, no? No. I mean, yes. I mean, yeah, you're entitled to disagree with them making changes. Um, they've also said that they're going to make sure that the original versions are available as well, if you want to play the original versions rather than the remastered one. But, like, people making a big deal out of it and, like, genuinely saying, I can't support these developers, I think that's just dumb. I think you just need to grow up. <laughs> okay, senor sissy pants, we'll take that miniature listener. I love device. the joke with, the, with this, actually. The is $10 million. Damn. Ten million? Wait, is that ten million in crazy fake French dollars or ten million in regular dollars? Regular dollar. The market is bearish on crazy fake French dollar. <laughs> okay. Do you have any straight tufts of Sasquatch hair? No. Do you have any <laughs> Sasquatch hats like in the, the shape road. of a cow udder? No. <clears throat> Do you have any rubber chickens with a pulley in the middle? Aha! Monkey yeah. Island. <laughs> Do you have any amulets of protection against greater hypnosis? No. Do you have any... No. How do you know what he was gonna... No. <laughs> Do you? No. Do... No. <laughs> Do you? No. <laughs> Do you? No. <laughs> I Do love you this have bit. Any straight okay, there we go. Hair? No. 
All right. Nothing for us right now. Zip. Does the carpet match the drapes? No. And you know why? Because the man does not want him to. He is threatened by their potential unification. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, I am really curious um, to see how they do um, the episode five uh, accent. Because that's, like, I, I think that's probably my favorite one. <laughs> I thought that one was, my like, the, the funniest. Look outside. It's the Toy Mafia. What? Where? Oh, yeah. Booth. There is no one. <laughs> Sorry, Bosco. Just yanking your chain, amigo. Sacre bleu. I could do this all day. And I intend to. I noticed at the front of Bosco's store has been changed to match the extra from his sign and hit the road. Has it? See you I later, need to have Bosco. a look at that. I know not this Bosco of whom you speak. But if I see him, I shall bid him a reservoir. <laughs> He does not speak French, clearly. Are those the same two weenies that were in there a month ago? Are you the same two weenies that were in here a month ago? Sick burn. <laughs> All right. Let me have a look. Is it different? I mean, that does look the same to me, but that's probably just my brain, like, not remembering what it looked like. All right. Whee! Send Max to, to the moon. <laughs> well, not necessarily to the moon just yet, but, uh, all right. Where are we going, Sam? Look at the last circle. That's Mama Busco. Oh. Teddy Bear's Mafia Free Playland and Casino. Goody! I don't think we saw the outside of uh, this place either before, did we? Maybe like a really close-up outside, actually. I think I remember seeing the tent thing, but not the sort of face. The big, the bear head. Oh, that transition's cool. Oh, it's good to be back in here. Ah, uh, it's Leonard! <laughs> Welcome to Teddy Bear's Mafia Free Playland and Casino. Ah! That face. My name's Lovey Bear. Boy, do we have some <laughs> fun and games for hey, you. Here, take this token amount of tokens as our way of saying welcome and go spend a lot of money. Holy domesticated ursins, Max. Lovey Bear here's got the same head as that hypnotic teddy bear from Myra's talk show. Wait, it's high too. Well, I say hi back to him. had a litter of giant babies? I don't know, Max. Call it canine intuition, but I think our mole discovered something about these teddy bears he shouldn't have. Mm. We've got to find him and get to the bottom of this. You're lucky this mask doesn't have ear holes, or I might have <laughs> heard that secret conversation you just had right in front of me. <laughs> what? Sorry, I wasn't listening. You give tokens to first-time customers? That's right. Go on, enjoy, live a little. It just seems like bad business sense. Okay, tell you what. 13 hours from now, when you're trying to pawn your little friend here to pay off the VIG, we can talk then about bad business sense. Okay, we'll come back then. The voices sound different. I think the only change they did with the voices is they track down the original files and the voices are a lot less compressed than they were. Um, I think that's like one major change. It's most noticeable with Sybil, I think. I think Sybil's voice sounds different because um, it's it's higher quality. I hear you have a mole problem. The same voice hey, clips. It's a genetic. Yeah, condition. they're the same ones. I just think they're high quality. Back. Holy cow! I'm actually being too subtle. First time that's ever happened. Maybe I should just stick to the code phrase. Okay. Does the carpet match the drapes? If Don Teddy Bear says so, they do. Don Teddy Bear? I thought this place was mafia free. That's right, kiddies. 100% mafia free. No mafia anywhere. <laughs> Come on, true. 
Okay. We're looking for somebody who works here. Look, I just greet the guests. You want to know who works here? Talk to Don Ted E. Bear. He's in charge. Where's the Don? He's got, uh, business in the back room. Oh. You know what I mean? What kind of business? Peace? Yeah, the kind of business that gets said like it's got quote marks around <laughs> it. So's you know not to ask. Mm-hmm. We're looking for somebody who works here. It's Just talk to Ted E. Bear in the back room. He knows everyone. Okay. Thanks, Levy Bear. Enjoy, and remember, if you're not losing, we're not winning. Yeah, the eyes moving is definitely uh, a bit eerie. Hold on, the, where's the music gone? It's definitely quiet. Teddy Bear has oodles of fun. Socks and sandwiches and poker and guns. And look, no mobsters, nary a one. With you and me and Teddy Bear. I want the music back. It's too quiet in here. Well, I'm going I'm to go out and go back in so I can get the music. Unless the music's broken for some reason. That would make me sad. Yeah, the house always wins. That's what they say. Where are we going, Sam? Teddy Bear's mom. Teddy! Alright, let's go. A few glitches that need addressing. Yeah. Come on. Gumball. Oh, I need to do the gumball uh, machine. I'll do that at some point. Here we go. Welcome to Teddy. Step right. Okay. All right, there's the uh, there's a meatball sandwich. Teddy Bear's original meatball sandwich. Looks tasty. The <laughs> original Teddy Teddy's. Bear made this original meatball sandwich with his own two paws in 1957. The microorganisms that give Teddy's modern meatballs their distinctive tang are descended from the colony in this sandwich. Wow. That's a disturbing clown. All right, let's play Whack the Rats. Look, Max, it's a beloved carnival game with a delightful mobster twist. What better way to relax than by offing fake rodents in the most violent way imaginable? Note, please supply your own firearm. We always do. Insert token to play. Yeah, we don't actually really know who, uh... Let's give this a shot. Uh, William Caston in pain. is. These rats are gonna pop up, see? If the rat I think, I think it's like a shut, that's a stage name you. or something, isn't it? But if that rat singing, you put a bullet in his head, Capish. Now have fun. All right, let's go. How can we not? The orange is slightly uh. Slightly blighter in this one, I think. Go. My high school guidance counselor was right. <laughs> I should have become a mafia hitman. <laughs> Look, there's the prize. As advertised, it's an almost entirely worthless teddy bear kid. refrigerator magnet. You have to paying off exactly. Hey, let's find someone with a metal. I even have that exact gun on my spy. <laughs> oh, Max, you really know how to find the bright side of everything, don't you? Yes, I do. Now let's go shoot something. Cause yeah, they uh back in um in 2010, they added the the Sam and Max promotional item, so you had like the Max head. Uh, Sam's gun and Max's gun as actual items, which is really cool. I never actually got them originally because I didn't have the money to pre-order um, the Devil's Players House at the time, but I ended up getting, like, acquiring them through other means later on. And now I don't, don't want to get rid of them. Right. One-armed bandit. You're on fire! Sweet mother of bleary-eyed gambling addiction, we won! Yeah, we won, but there's no prize! You gotta hand it to Teddy Bear. He really puts the bandit in one-armed bandit. Hold it! What's the password? <laughs> you may enter. <laughs> I'm gonna have to find out the password at some points, but we have just the thing. Tell you what, though. Let's go gamble with Leonard. Well, what do we have here? I'd say the circus was in town. But I know for a fact they the won't be here like till next circus Friday, ringmaster. so you must be here to play cards. Depends. Who are we playing? The name's Steak Charmer. Leonard Steak Charmer. And let's just say I, love this I didn't rack up 10 million tokens by getting lucky. <laughs> How'd you get him then? By cheating? Look, Rabbit. Leonard Steak Charmer's no cheat. He's just Doubt. that good. Okay, what's the game, Steak Charmer? 
truest test of skill there is. Indian poker. How exactly does one play poker of the Indian persuasion? You know you're off to a good start when your opponent doesn't even know how to play. You, you can transfer some of your games to GOG, actually. Sharks or shark sharks? Um, God know, Connect allows you to get a few. Not all of them, though. Whatever. Look, it's simple. We both get dealt a card which we put on our forehead without looking at it. So we can see each other's card, but not our own. Pretty sharp, McGruff. Don't call me that. That's true. And you make a bet you windows. think you got the higher card, or fold if you want out. That's it? Yep. And we see who's got the highest card, and then I win, like always. Well, when you put it like that, we'd be fools not to play. All right, then, let's play. Actually, you know what? Let's ask him some questions first. Leonard Steak Charmer, huh? You don't look like a Leonard Steak Charmer. Oh, yeah? Mm -hmm. What do I look like? You look more like a uh, Boris Crinkle. <laughs> That's what everyone says. The joke with that, I think, is um, one of the first games that Telltale made was actually a poker game called Telltale Texas Hold'em. Um, and Leonard reuses um, the model of one of the characters from that game called Boris Crinkle. So I think that's what that joke is. I think. I, I've never actually played Telltale Texas Hold'em, so. So are you a real Indian? Yeah, I'm a wooden Indian. As in, wouldn't bet against me if I was you. Oh, very good, sir. I'll kill him! <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> How do you get anyone to gamble with you? Frankly, you seem shady. I offer great odds, <laughs> and I possess a certain subtle charm. Oh. I hate to break it to you, but non-existent and subtle are two different things. <laughs> Maybe charm is a euphemism for gum disease. Look, I'm here to play poker. Are we gonna get this dog and bunny show on the road, or what? All right. <laughs> you are one ugly man. Wow. Leonard, you give new meaning to the phrase, a face only a mother could love. My mama said I was beautiful. Uh... <laughs> oh, that's something to remember, actually. He, he, he does have a weakness for his mother. Yeah, foreshadowing. Does the carpet match the drapes? No, it's stained with tobacco juice. Oh. Squalid yet candid. Normally, I like that in a gambler. But for you, we'll make an exception. All right, let's play. We'd like to try our hand at a hand of Indian poker. You won't regret this, Hound. Mm -hmm. By which I mean, I won't regret this. Oh, and try any funny stuff with your partner and I'll shoot you both. That seems fair. Okay. So basically, this is how it's played. And look, at, he's kind of staring at something. And he's realized what he's going to do. I got 10 million tokens says I got a better card than you. I'm betting it all. Sweet second mortgages on a summer home. We can't match that. Tell you what, Pooch. I'm feeling so confident. I'll give you 10 million to one odds. Just bet one token and you can win the whole pot. Those are mighty good odds. No, they ain't, deputy dog. Because I never lose. Hmm. <laughs> so, in or out? We'll bet. Sure, we'll bet a token. <laughs> Sorry, Rover. You lose. Stick Chama. Oh, Why did you know that? Mama was wrong. Gambling does pay. I'd say better luck next time. But it'll take more than luck to beat me. Hmm. Yeah, it'd take a sturdy oaken staff to really do the job. So what was he staring at? Let's have a look. That's enough for now. It's like he was staring at something above Although the dog. I could have sworn you were a dog, not a chicken. A common mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so let's have a look. Above the door is this clown nose. That is one shiny nose. Oh, almost as shiny as yours. Keep it up and you'll get a shiner too. Interesting. So there's a shiny nose there that reflects Leonard's face. It turns out that's how he's been cheating. He's been looking directly at the clown nose so you can tell what card he has and get his bet right every time. But what if we were to manipulate it slightly? Wow, it sticks. Okay, let's play again. Back for a little more public humiliation? Just a little more. Deal. All right. Let's go. Oh. Just finished watching the Verdun episode one and two. Nice. Welcome to the stream. I'm betting all We haven't started, like... Gotten very you far yet, so you haven't missed one. much. So, in or out? I'm in. 
Sure, we'll bet a token. Eh, sorry, Fido. <laughs> you lose. The dog wins. What? I you you cheated me! <laughs> what are you talking about, Leonard? How did we cheat? You pay up, steak charmer. Mama, why weren't you watching over me? I'm ruined. <laughs> let's go, Max. Leonard and his dead mother need some alone time right now. <laughs> yeah, let's go see if we can play whack the rats ten million times in a row without passing out. All right. So we now have ten million tokens. Well, it's not necessarily ten million dollars, but maybe that could get us that invention from Bosco. Remember, he had a listening device that we could uh, to, could buy, and the. Uh, Listening device might be just what we need to get the password for that door. Also, I'm going to remember to look at the uh, the gumball machine here because I kept forgetting to do that. Hmm. Are those? Yep, they've resorted to filling the candy machine with antidepressants. <laughs> How depressing! <laughs> the antidepressants in the gumball machine. You know what? That actually that would be, probably be kind of useful. <laughs> um. And thank you, Harper Onions, for the 200 bits you posted maxed earlier? I don't know. What do you mean? Oh, uh, Xanax. Yeah, it's just... <laughs> Athletes foot outbreak linked to global warming. Interesting. Bonjour. Okay, buddy. Here are some tokens. We want to buy something. Oui, oui, monsieur. Give us that listening device. Okay, stinky pants. Here's your ten million. By this secret stint of St. Gainsbourg. These are not American dollar. No, but there are ten million of them. Monsieur, yeah. <laughs> well, the prizes at Ted E. Bears can be quite useful. I accept. And in return, I give you the miniature listening device. This is a bug. Do you get it? Precisement. It's Does a this bug. really work? Does this thing really work? That answer your question. Now listen up, Maggie. Oh, I love I this character. Am a bug. <laughs> Drop me in enemy territory, and I will get all the information you need. You just make sure to pick me up again, and I will repeat every word. Every word. <laughs> I love we'll this. We'll be putting you in some situations that could be a mite precarious. Think you can handle it? I was a non boy. You don't want to know what I've been through. <laughs> they slaughtered ladybugs. Ladybugs! And that's not all. <laughs> I've seen them kill larvae. Larvae! <laughs> so yeah, I think I can handle it. Now I need some shut-eye before the mission. Put me in your pocket. In your pocket! Move, maggot! Sir, yes, sir. <laughs> He's voiced by Dave Grossman? Oh, that's pretty cool. I, I do, I absolutely adore that character. Because not only is he an item, but he's like... <laughs> He's like a little, like, little army guy. <laughs> I love him so much. He's a recurring character as well. He comes up in, like, multiple episodes. All right. Whee! Let's go. Where are we going, Sam? Were there pigeons flying around in the original one? Teddy bears, mafia-free Playland and Casino. I love how he's introducing Abe hey! must die. Oh, yeah, that is a great scene. Yeah, multiple seasons. He has like a, a pretty, not necessarily important, but a pretty big role in uh, season two, episode one. Like Welcome you learn more about the character. Teddy Bears, Mafia Free, Playland, I love some Max too. You know what? Home of the losing is slots in town. All right. What we're gonna do? Leonard's still crying. That's good. Um, I'm going to put this organic listening device here. And you'll realize whenever we use the one-armed bandit, um, the, the, someone comes down, so. Have you ever watched the Sam Max animated series? I have, but it's been a while. Still no prize. We're Need to re -watch wasting them. our money, Sam. Hold it. What's the password? You may enter. I actually already remember the password. Uh, but I won't let you guys know. Did you get it all? Yeah, I got it. Now listen up. Here's what they said. Hold it. What's the password? 
That's gotta be, what, a hundred times I've come through that door today, and you still don't recognize me? It's the bear heads, boss. They all look alike. Damn, they said that pretty quick. <sighs> Leave the gun, take the cannolis. You may enter. <laughs> now, get me in that pocket. Move! Sir, yes, sir. Oh, he was still on the wall for a second there. Minor bug. Ha, <laughs> bug. <laughs> Hold it, mugs. Not mugs, Max. I don't care if it's <laughs> Teddy Ruxpin. No one gets in without a password. Oh, right. That would be what again? Why don't you tell me? <laughs> Does the carpet match the drapes? I don't know. I set fire to the drapes. I love to watch things burn. Oh, God. Hey, me too. <laughs> I'm sorry I asked. Leave the gun. Take the cannolis. You may enter. All right. This is it? Where's the food? Surely there's a buffet back here. Hey, look. That must be Teddy Bear. There he Where is. Where do you wise guys think you're going? Who, us? We were just browsing. We frown on that around here. I'm Chuckles, <laughs> the casino pit boss. I've had my eye on you. Uh, how long have you been watching us? Long enough. Do I look any taller than I did ten minutes ago? <laughs> Your win at poker was, shall we say, creative. Why, whatever are you insinuating? That was nice work. You also somehow got the password to let you into this room. Very clever. I'm impressed. Mm. The Toy Mafia can use guys who are long on brains and short on scruples. Are you interested? Uh, King Boss, I actually made a Gmod picture, like, God, years ago now, which was like, it was just like a Gmod pose of Max talking to the Pyro. Um... I need to see if I can dig that up, and I'll um, I'll post it in my Discord um, and tag you. So, because like I, it's something I, I made a really long time ago. Because I've been a fan of like TF2 and Simon Max simultaneously for like ten years now. <laughs> so, um, yeah. In fact, I, I was a fan of Simon Max when they added the Simon Max items, and I was like, my, my I lost my mind basically. It was, it was so cool to see the, the games have a crossover. Um, what mafia? Exactly. We're not really joiners. Have you heard the term offer you can't refuse? Yeah. Is that when the Telltale this Games is one of thing? Those. Yes. I see. I believe it was. I find it hard to resist any offer whatsoever. I might have posted it there That's at some true. point. Serial companies love him. What I made that <laughs> picture on a box. The fact that you've already got your own animal costume shows great initiative. Costumes? But before we can accept you into the family, there are two jobs I need you to do for us. Chuckles, bad news. The original meatball sandwich has been stolen. There are three jobs I need you to do. For. <laughs> I love that line. What kind of jobs? Oh, the usual. I want you to lean on somebody. Okay. I want you to whack somebody. Right. And I want you to recover a small item that belongs to us. Fair enough. <laughs> I just love the, there are two jobs you need to do for us. <laughs> so the meatball sandwich has been stolen. There are three jobs. It's so good. It's perfect. Yeah, the timing is so good. Who do you want us to lean on? A local shopkeeper who's been refusing to stock our products. Take these special teddy bears and make sure he displays them on the sale table in the front of his store. Mm -hmm. No problem. The Can store we? is called Bosco's Inconvenience. Uh, um, no problem. All right. Who do you want us to whack? We're having trouble with a witness who refuses to see things our way. Oh, no. I want you to silence a certain Sybil Pandemic. Silence as in gag her? Gag her with a pistol. <laughs> you want us to kill Sybil? Make it messy as a message to other potential witnesses. Hmm. We have her under surveillance, so we'll be watching. Yikes. So we'll have to fake that, of course, because we can't just kill Sybil. What is it that you want us to recover? It's that rotting old sandwich, right? The original meatball sandwich has great sentimental value to our organization. I want you to track it down before the disrespectful slime bag who stole it manages to fence it to some other lowlife. I wonder Sounds who stole it. Detective Deal with the thief as you see fit. We'd like to preserve plausible deniability on this hope one. The game needs to come back a telltale. Yeah, I hope like it has. It comes to, like once they've done all three seasons, they have like the scope to do like a fourth season maybe. Um, and heck, maybe even like a new Tales of Monkey Island if they're able to get the rights. That'd be really nice. But who knows? 
Who knows? I wonder who has the rights to the Strong Bad game. Did that automatically go back to um, the Strong Bad guys? I can't remember the name right now. Is it Brothers Chaps? Um, isn't the Wolf Among Us 2 still planned? I'm pretty sure they're actually working on that armor. Like, someone's working on that. I don't know who exactly. All right. I think we've got it. Do these three things, Sam and Max, and you shall be as we are. Members of what the happens if you mafia. look at the one-armed oh, bandit before right. talking to Leonard? I'll have we'll to give that back. a go. Word of advice, because I like you two. When you walk away from the toy mafia, But the chaps don't back. own the game itself. Okay. And who does it belong to? Because it'd be nice to get a remaster of that, because, um... Actually, I'll be honest, I haven't actually played through all the, um... The Strong Bad episode. I think I've only played the first one. It's up to them if the game gets re-released. Gotcha. Yeah, I didn't think Skunk Ape had the rights to it. I think Skunk Ape only had the rights to the, uh, to the Sam and Max games. Oh! Hey, the one-armed bandit's one arm is missing. Stolen! By a bandit, perhaps? Well then. What happens if you try and put a... It's less fun without the arm. <laughs> Interesting. There's a mystery a afoot. The original meatball sandwich is gone. I didn't do it! Season 4 would ruin the end of the Devil's Playhouse. You'd rather just want one unrelated. Oh, well, I think if they were to continue, they probably wouldn't address, like, the uh, Devil's Playhouse that much. It would probably just be Sam and Max are solving cases again. And that way they wouldn't explain, you know... Uh, it, it would just, you know, it would just be Sam and Max. If that makes sense. <laughs> the, the unarmed bandit. <laughs> um, all right. Let's go over to Sybil's first, because I think she's, uh, now that she's, I think she's learned that she might be under threat. There may be some hitmen, uh, looking for her. Howdy, Sybil. No, no, you've got the wrong person. I mean dame. I mean dame person. Isn't dame person that big chin puppet used to scare children? Oh, Sam, Max, thank goodness it's you. I thought it was someone come to kill me. Yes, well, uh... How's that new profession working out? Oh, Sam. The life of a professional witness isn't all courtroom yeah, theatrics and finger-pointing. The Toy Mafia told me if I testified against them, they'd rub me out. They tried to buy you off with a Swedish massage? <laughs> no, Max. I think they meant murder. Shoot her mug? Not yet. So are you going to testify? Unfortunately, I've discovered that I have too many principles I, not I to. I know the solution. A lousy time. You don't need to tell me it. <laughs> principles are pesky things. I'm trying to preserve the mystery for people now. who don't know. I know these games. <laughs> A head's less round it is. Have you considered the possibility of staging your own deaths to throw the toy mafia off the scent? That would be dishonest. It would be a refutation of everything I stand for as a professional witness. Oh Big God. payoffs, craft, corruption. The truth. You're a real antique, you know that? I mean in a good way. I've always liked antiques. Yeah, Bill Farmer's thumb is pretty good as well. You seem, understandably, a little tense. Maybe you should switch to decaf. What? Oh, yes. The coffee cup. I'm out of mm -hmm. coffee, but I'm yeah, so nervous I uh, keep trying to drink it anyway. Dave Nolan it's funny how stress can reduce uh, you to just has a done bundle of Sam reflexes. Since this game. Is that what happened to me? In 2006. Wouldn't it be wonderful to think so? Oh, should it be four filling in the kitchen? Okay. We'll be back. I know you will. You're the only two I can trust. Ouch. <laughs> really? She should consider guilt slinger as her next profession. I'll give that a go. I don't think I've ever tried that before. <laughs> Is that it? Did he get her? I don't see any blood. Nope. I guess he must have missed. Oh, interesting. I didn't actually know you could do that. Okay. Yeah, I I'd love a remake of Strong Bud's Cool Game. I don't know who'd do it, but, you know, it would be nice to see. Of course, I'd like to see um, Tales of Monkey Island as well, but I think the rights rest with Disney at the moment, and that's probably quite a bit to wrestle out. Oh 
Bonjour. Yes, Dave Boat now does Max in Spoken Act 2. Because Dave Boat is kind of a sound alike for William Caston. Uh, so we need to get this onto the sale table. Alt, are you trying to deliver something? But of course, he I won't let us. You. So maybe hey, if he's distracted. Look outside. It's the Toy Mafia. What? Where? You are right. It is a toy mafioso pretending to read the newspaper. You will not sneak past me. Oh, no. The price of paranoia is eternal vigilance. <sighs> what if his toy mafia disguise is just a disguise? <laughs> I gotta see what he's reading. All right, so if we try to put this on... <sighs> If he's pretending to read local news... Yeah, there's like a whole CIA. bunch of companies taking on the legacy of Telltale at the moment. It's like different eras of Telltale as well, which Wait, is really Sam, weird. While he's distracted. Right, I'll just... Great Coleco's ghost. Okay, so that doesn't just... work. Thanks, little We need to buddy. somehow Good. sabotage Beatad as well. He may just be Illuminati. <laughs> when Bosco gets distracted, he really gets distracted. <laughs> All right, and this is the uh, the camera that picks up on that. I wonder if we can uh, mess with it a little bit. If he's pretending to do the word jumble, he's with the Knights of Malta. Special delivery. Disney's currently being sued over Muppet Babies. <laughs> Mixed yeah, Mojo made a post saying who owns what. Camera. Oh, that's helpful. Oh, the society pages. <laughs> Must be skull and bones. <laughs> Oscar, pay attention, dude. All right. He's pretending to read the gardening section. So it's true. He is Toy Mafia. <laughs> I hope we don't lose Bosco's friendship over this. Me neither. He's my second favorite delusional paranoid. Ah. <laughs> Oh no. Oh no. He's coming in. We're done for. Thumbs up. <laughs> I surrender. I surrender. Uh, I told you this would happen. I told you he would deliver. And he delivered. I can't believe that guy. <laughs> Don't worry, Bosco. We'll help you purge this place of Mafia contraband just as soon as we solve this case we're so incredibly busy with. Oh yeah, you're real busy. You've just been loitering around my store all day. What can we say? We love to loiter. So now mm -hmm. we get to be toy mobsters, right? Not yet. Our journey to the dark side has just begun. All right. We have to kill some younglings first. Uh, what Sybil might just do. Perhaps we can fake her death. With some ketchup. Could I get a grande ketchup macchiato with extra foam? You crack me up, little buddy. Who's joking? <laughs> yes, Bosco's voice has been, has been changed, uh, Kida. He's the only character that's been recast, though. Hey, wait a second. Why didn't BTS part do work? Uh, my camera! Oh, no, no, no! <laughs> All right. So now we have a uh, a coffee cup full of ketchup. That might be able to make a mess. Wonder why Bosco wasn't in the Devil's Playhouse. I think the the Devil's Playhouse intentionally kind of shook up the status quo. Like for most of the season, we didn't have Sybil and and Bosco because they were like in every episode of season one and two, and they were like major characters. I think for season three, they just were like, okay, let's get those characters aside and have them like out of the picture for this particular story. Um, which I kind of get. Now we can try shooting stuff in Bosco's. Oh, that's true. Oops. I didn't actually mean to do that. <laughs> One of the Steve Ramirez mentions that the old VA for Bosco did blackface? That's... I mean... The original voice was, you know, a white guy doing a Mr. T impression. That might be what they mean. Um, I'm not sure if... I know not that I've ever heard anywhere, but it might be true. Oh my goodness! Thank you. I'd lose my head if it wasn't attached. Really, you're a bunch of bad things. 
I didn't actually know that. Damn. Well then. It's probably kind of good that they replaced him, but he still voices Jimmy Two Teeth, so. Alright. That's all. <laughs> Come on. Oh. Alright. Oh, they didn't you got don't have the mess. Excellent. Nice and messy. That should send a clear message to any other potential rats. Is it a bug? I'm reminded of yesterday's dinner. Oh, no, just a problem with the updated civil model. Hey, what happened to the picture? With all due respect, Don, who cares? Now that she's whacked, we the don't need has to a keep watching her, section on the Wikipedia page? I suppose so. Damn. Give me a pretzel, Chuckles. These things always make me peckish. You're a real sociopath, I didn't actually Don know Barry. that about him. I mean that as a compliment, naturally. Naturally. Hey, Sam! Webcam tastes like chicken! Good idea, Chum. Now those toy mafia goons won't see Sybil wake up. It's a bug. Which could okay. be important to our continued good health. And we've learned that webcams go great with ketchup. Another fun fact to add to the crime-fighting arsenal. Okay. Hey, Sam! Are we mafiosi yet? No, there's still the matter of the original meatball sandwich. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah! They didn't change the line, Frank, they didn't change the lines because they thought people might be offended. They didn't, they changed the lines because they don't stand by it anymore. And they wanted to change it because it was their project and they could do what they want with it. That's the reason. Texture's supposed to update on screen, but they don't for whatever reason. Okay. Well, hopefully they get that fixed. So, the meatball sandwich. Uh, we can only go to, like, three or four places at the moment. I think it's about four. So, there's the... Uh, Mafia Free Playland and Casino, which um, obviously it's not there, or is it? There's Sybils, which we've just been to, and there's Bosco's, which we've just been to, which leaves only really one place, which is the office. But why would it be in there? Well, there is a fence there now for stolen goods. Tell you what, I, I want to start shooting stuff in Bosco's first. <laughs> Man. Oh, there are some little quirks in this uh this uh new beer that I like. <laughs> you busy death of his Hey uh Ray, how you doing? You make me come over there. He's got a gun and he doesn't know how to use it. <laughs> Why did I ever get rid of the B tads? Hey! Alright, there we go. Awesome the remaster so far? It's great! Give him the tokens I have. I already ha um, I already gave him the tokens though, didn't I? Alright, hold on. I'll try I only I've only got like one. I'll try giving him that if that does something. Cause a lot of like I haven't tried in these games before. Bonjour. <laughs> Alright. What can we buy for a handful of game tokens and some pocket lint? <laughs> More pocket lint. No thanks. Okay. Hold on. <laughs> okay. Um, so we're going to go to the office. Yeah, I don't have a problem with uh, Bosco New Year, but yeah, I really like the, the remaster so far. The lighting looks gorgeous. Uh, some of the new additions are really nice. There's like tie-ins with all the seasons. Like, there's a billboard from Season 3 there uh, about a location from Season 3. If you really think it's if the, like the any ch like changes to the dialogue have ruined the game, then I don't know what to tell you. I just think that's dumb. Show me the money. Show me the sandwich. Show me the money. You show me the sandwich, I'll show yeah, the you the money. Yeah, the new model is awesome. I will, I tell you. Just show me the money. <laughs> you too. <laughs> Hi, jerk bag. Trying to fence something hot, Leonard? Like a meatball sandwich, Leonard? A meatball sandwich you stole, Leonard? 
You two stay back, or I swear by my mother's best friend, I'll shoot you both. <laughs> Do you guys notice anything interesting about his gun? Yeah, it is very minor in the grand scheme of things. Now, let's be reasonable, Leonard. We'll say the three of us got the sandwich back. Maybe the toy mafia will give <laughs> yeah, you a reward. Yeah, his gun has an mm. orange cap on it. <laughs> Yeah, Leonard, even though they know you're a cheating jerk bag, I'm sure they'll believe you. Good point, bunny-like thing. No dice, lassie. Oh, should I not have moved my lips when I thought that? <laughs> Just relax, Leonard. Can I get you a refreshing beverage? Maybe a pillow? Move and you're a dead dog. Damn. Sam, has that flaccid old gambit ever worked? All those years of stewardess school don't disappear overnight, Max. You know, Leonard, little Jimmy Two Teeth there cannot be trusted. He still has our pepper grinder. Hey, I was going to return it. Oh, so I should trust the two dopes who cheated me out of my fortune instead? Let's pretend it makes sense to say yes to that question. <laughs> Look, I don't trust Jimmy any farther than I can throw him, but fortunately for me, I can throw him a country mile. Hey, what? Anyway, Max is the one that realizes that it's a cap gun. Excuse me, are you by any chance holding us at gunpoint with a harmless cap gun? Once a cheat, always a cheat, eh, Leonard? What? No. Sick him, little buddy. I thought you'd never sick. Oh. Oh. <laughs> okay, Leonard. Jimmy's like, nope. Are you gonna tell us where the sandwich is? Or are we gonna have to get rough, her? Say rough! Say rough! <laughs> I'll never talk. There ain't nothing you can do to break me. Nothing. Does your mother know what you've become? Don't you talk about my mama. My mama's a saint. <laughs> Is she the saint of sterno heated fried food? Because if so, she may have another follower. Hold on, Max. I love that he's like sad the little mini Max desk as well. Which? His uninspired diction or his laughably bad grammar? Neither. I say we hit this cheat and slime receptacle where it hurts the most. Right in the mother. You mean... That's right, Max. It's time to pull out the yo mama jokes. Oh Ray! god, this bit. <laughs> no, not that. Anything but that. Leonard... Yo mama's so fat. Uh, she's so fat. Oh, curdled goat's milk on a warm summer day. I can never remember hope the punchline. I hope so. That's funny. I remember all the punchlines. This is a really good puzzle. I love this puzzle, actually. Well, then, Max, I think we'll have to break this two-bit varmint as a team. You have to piece together, like, um, a setup and a punchline for different, um, <laughs> different Yo Mama jokes. Yo Mama's so fat. Um... There we go. That's this one. She has more folds than an origami accordion. Oh, it's true. Oh yeah, he's definitely going red. It's working. Let's keep it up, little buddy. Okay, making grown men weep. A fun pastime for the whole family. Yo mama's so perky. Um, where is this? The only time she's low is at a limbo contest. Oh, it hurts. It hurts. Yes, we're definitely making a dent now. Let's keep it up, little buddy. Okay. <laughs> yeah, the, the, you go back to this moment in season two through like the uh, the ghost of Christmas past thing. <laughs> it's so good. Yo, mama's so radiant. Um. If she fell in nuclear waste, no one would notice. Oh, mama, make oh it my god, stop. he's so red. He's getting closer to breaking. Let's keep it up, little buddy. Yeah. Yo mama's so thrifty. Um She brings coupons to the Penny Arcade. <laughs> stop, please stop. <laughs> My god. It can all be over if you'll just tell us where the sandwich is. No. <laughs> Let's give no. it one more time, Sam. Um I think Volga's a Yo good one. Yo mama's so vulgar. Her mouth would make a longshoreman blush. <laughs> okay, okay. I'll tell you where the sandwich is. Just leave my mama alone. Of course, Leonard. We would never do anything to dishonor your dead mother. <laughs> he never even took the sandwich out of the casino. Hid it in the prize slot of the one-armed bandit, and then took the one arm so no one could win it. Which brings us to the next question. Hmm. Where's the arm? I got it right here. Yeah, he's definitely redder than I remember him being. Thanks, jerkbag. How did we not notice that before? I was too busy taking his cap gun to notice that extra arm. We'd best get back to the casino and win back that sandwich. See you around, sucker. Wait, hey, Kristen. Aren't you gonna untie me? <laughs> Hello? Guys? 
Jimmy? Anybody? <laughs> Just so you guys know, Leonard doesn't get untied until, like, the end of Season 2. <laughs> he, he ends up becoming, like, a punching bag. Um, poor guy. <laughs> well, I would say poor guy, but, you know, he's a cheater. A scumbag. We got the bandit arm. Where are we going, Sam? And uh, we're Teddy back here. Bears Mafia Free Playland and Casino. Goody! Yeah, this took me a close for over here. <laughs> like in in pretty much every other episode following this one, like up to the end of season two, um, you can find him just in the closet. Welcome to Teddy Bears Mafia Free Playland and Casino. Ask about our frequent bankruptcy program. Okay. We go over here, and we gotta put this back in the slot. Presto, a non-armed bandit no longer. All right. Let's go. You're on fire. Success. Here's the meatball sandwich. Should we taste it to make sure? Sweet Tomaine, no. <laughs> Did that thing just give you a prize? Must be out of adjustment. I'll have it serviced. On the plus side, we've recovered the original meatball sandwich. And what a pungent piece of sculpture it is. I'm surprised we couldn't smell it from downtown. Let me see that. Hmm. Yes, that's definitely the sandwich. <laughs> Teddy Bear will be very pleased. Is he hungry? Generally, yes. <laughs> You've done well, boys. Follow me there we in the go. back room. There's a little initiation. It's time ceremony. to become uh, mafiosos. We're getting our pristine navels groped by pristine naval officers again. Shut your ultra-wide trap and follow me. <laughs> like you just acknowledged how wide Sam, Max's mouth is. Max, you have done what we have asked of you: acts of intelligence, malevolence, and subservience. And we welcome you into the ranks of the Orso Nostra. Wait. Hey, my stuff runneth over. Did they have bare heads? With the ceremonial picking in the original? Baskets, and then a few other I don't think they did, did And then Joey will show up with some cold cuts. But first, as a The bare heads respect, new. I thought, yeah, I thought they were. my mask. Which is good, because I can barely talk through the stupid thing. That's better. Man alive, do I schwitz in that getup. <laughs> Holy fat free carp on a skewer. You're a mole. In fact, you must be the one we... I mean, uh... Does the carpet match the drapes? The code phrase, idiot! These guys are freelance police. Apparently, they still haven't figured out that I've switched sides. He's right, Max. We still haven't realized that. Yeah. Wait, so I get that the mole turned traitor, presumably for the wealth and power that the toy mafia could offer. Oh, yeah, Harry Moleman is it voices a lot of pirates in Tales of McAllen. Teddy e. Bears. For all we know, the original Teddy e. Bear choked on his own meatball sandwich back in 65. Yes, good point. <laughs> Should we run now? He is cryptic, so. I think, yeah. Get them! Head for the car, little buddy. All right. So, this is another puzzle where we have to basically Sam, I couldn't help but notice shake these guys up our tail. Thirsty gangsters are right on our tail. Eat lead, coppers. <laughs> yes, I saw that. <laughs> What's worse, they've got those new bulletproof tires from Crime Mart. Oh, no. Holy modern technology gone horribly, horribly awry. Okay. Again, this is quite simple, though. And... This is not good. <laughs> is that all of them? All but one. Teddy Bear himself. Honestly, a lot of the driving puzzles once and for all. can be Good solved idea. in on, less boy. than like 10 seconds. <laughs> well, if you know what you're doing, um, you can pretty much like solve them instantly. Um, hey, the dawn is gone. Well, now's our chance to find out just what that traitorous mole bear is planning. You know, without that menacing mumble, he doesn't seem capable of planning brunch, much less a dastardly master plan. Agreed. But in my experience, there's the always something sign. interesting oh, yeah, behind any door that says, do not enter under pain of death. Ooh. Let's have a little look around, though. And thank you for the follow, Kirikaze. Much appreciated. He's got a bunch of maps in here, with what looks mm. like truck routes going all over the country. Interesting. Mm. But it probably doesn't mean anything. 
Go have a little look around. Okay. <laughs> Apparently, Teddy Bear keeps the details of his operation elsewhere. This gobbledygook's best left to the freelance accountants. Freelance a gangster accountants. needs a little privacy when he changes bear heads. True. Oh, minibar. What's a dangerous crime outfit without readily available liquor? All right. I like the bear heads. It's, it's a really cute little uh, new thing. Because in the original episode, they weren't bear heads. Hey, there's oh. a whole bear making factory back here. You this mean, area is one of my favorites. The propriety of a gambling casino is just a front for the shadowy underworld of labor and industry? I'm scandalized. You two? You're back? Inconceivable. <laughs> Come no closer. I know how to use both of these. I'll be Inconceivable. honest. You're probably more worried about the gun. Indeed. More fool you then. And this hypno bear will make you my willing slaves. <laughs> you can do the factory work now that you've rid me of my inept underlings. Look, look at the hypno bear. Do whatever Teddy Bear said. Don't you feel sleepy? Don't we? We don't. Hypnosis won't work on either of us. But play along until we get that gun from him. I asked you a question, slaves. Yes, master. So sleepy. What he said. <laughs> really? Seems a little off somehow. Hmm. Maybe it's just me. Oh, I know. Here's a test. Tall one, you shoot the short one. Excuse me, master. Shoot your friend. I command it. This flow. Yeah, I think Harry Moorman's performance is kind of meant to be um, like a Wallace Shawn uh, sort of impression. Because it has inconceivable on this song. This is my favorite song in the entire game. It looks so gorgeous. Look at the factory in the background. Oh yeah, the beds are really creepy. See that this song is what it's like. It's like a really long song in the soundtrack, but it's so good. It's called Cogs in Motion, and I highly recommend you look it up and listen to it at some point because it's just it's so good. Anyway, we can't actually shoot Max, but what we can do is this. I obey. Ah! Mother of mercy, is this the end of little Maxie? <laughs> I love oh, this scene. <laughs> death, where is that guy, Sting? Very... Oh, the pain, the pain, and only two days to retirement. You gotta promise to Timo the Dukes of Hazard for me. Promise me! <laughs> Okay, so or cowards die a thousand deaths. <laughs> well, heroes die but once, unless they're playing video games, in which case heroes die a lot too. So good night, fresh prince, and may Charlie's <laughs> angels sing thee to thy rest. Right, well, so cold. <laughs> Why am I so cold? Yeah, I'm actually choose up the scenery. Now that was a dramatic death. Okay. Good job, slave. Just about ready to have you shoot him again. <laughs> yes, master. Now, slave, you run the factory while I read the paper. Just get the hypnobear sorted for delivery. You can take them around later. Yes, master. Good, good. Now I'm off to see what Rye Observation Fred Bassett has for us today. <laughs> Max, you keep playing dead. I'll figure out some way to bring Teddy Bear and his factory to their respective knees. I can't hear you. I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we can't get out. So everything we're going to need right now is in this room. And uh, one thing that's quite kind of interesting, actually, is this guy's. Anybody uh... got a screw loose? <laughs> Listening to him reading the paper. Oh yeah, let's do that. Master. What is it, hypnotic slave? Something wrong with the machine? No, 
Then don't bother me. Alright, could you just you just say stuff randomly? Hold on, let's see. You gonna say something? You just wait. The shadows look great though. Oh! Maybe the bug. Oh, yeah, that's it. I forgot about that. Okay, here's what he said. Oh, that Garfield and his lasagna! What a character! <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> I love that. Alright, um, should we grab a teddy bear when we can? Alright, let's do that. You will give all your money to Teddy's bear. Aw, oh, isn't that cute? Alright. Give all your money to Teddy's bear. Max is immune to hypnosis because of his non-standard cassava. All right. Well, I didn't really do anything. Uh, the one thing we do need, though, is uh, to mess with this one-armed bandit. Oops. You're on fire. That's the voice box. I wonder if we could You're do a little bit... Uh, something a little bit different. We put the voice box in here. Okay, so if I put this Framel what's it in this Flingle flipper. <laughs> I love how um, Sam refers to things sometimes. Yeah, that one doesn't quite fit, so it's a uh, it looks a bit defective. There are more newspaper lines. Oh, isn't that cute? All right, I'll do another newspaper line. Oh, that Garfield and oh, his lasagna. that's the same one. What a character. Thank you, sir. I think it must be like a random selection. But that's unfortunate. All right. Uh, I'll try the altered one on Mac. Let's see if that does anything different. Hey, look what I made. You're on fire. Sam, I have to pee. <laughs> Oops, sorry. Let me see about wrapping things up. All right. Um, I mean, we could try the... the, the uh, this is quite a gizmo. Quick try the, the book thing again, but I think we'll just uh, use our altered teddy bear. Uh, this is this is what we need to do. We need to hypnotize them all. I know she's married now, but that Kathy is still smoking. Hot. I remember that one. Oh, master! What is it now, slave? You're on fire. I'm on I'm on fire. Help! Help! I'm on fire! I'm on fire! <laughs> and then I just pull the lever. There goes nothing. And <laughs> I'm on fire! <laughs> Here he goes. Oh dear. See, Max could nice fit through work, that just Sam. about, but Thanks, this guy, bro. not I don't so much. Think that mole is as spelt as yours truly, though. Mm -hmm. In fact, look. Um, little help? <laughs> I can't tell if it's comical or life-threatening. Who says they have to be mutually exclusive? <laughs> I forget which color means I can't take my bath and body scrub with me. That one, run. <laughs> I love the uh, that effect. They actually look good in the original as well. The slow motion uh, dive with the explosion. That's what I call breaking the bank. And the sidewalk, and the water main, and the buffet table. You're really broken up about that buffet table, aren't you, Max? It was the only innocent in this whole affair, Sam. 
I mean, apart from the bystanders and their pets. Look <laughs> up, little pal. Maybe the commissioner will take us out for a pungent meal at Squirrel Garden when we tell him how they we killed the, guy? the case. Oh, well, you'll be surprised, actually. For all the hard work I Harry did, Moleman I want is actually kind of surprisingly jelly resilient. Gleamers with extra salt. Well then. That's another another hypnosis plan foiled. This is Secret There's Agent Chuckles. The, the factory's been destroyed. Repeat, the factory has been destroyed. Commence plan B. Here we go. And yeah, we'll, now we'll be going into um, the one that I know best. Yeah, he's called Chuckles. <laughs> Ah, oh, this this song is a classic. Oh yeah, Chuckles was uh was that guy all along, the guy who was like guiding you along the um, who gave you the tasks. He's a uh, like, yeah, because in in Sound Max 104, you actually you say your voice sounds familiar, and you can't you can accuse him of being an ex mafia. Um, but he denies it, obviously. Tim Talbot. That's, uh, that's Harry Hum Harry Moleman's voice. No? Was there a bot? I didn't even see the message. <laughs> Thank you, Kiwi. Oh, I'm looking forward to doing the next one. The next one is, like, um... Didn't Max say something about being fluffy marketability in the original? I don't know. I remember that line from somewhere, but I don't think it was there. You mentioned on Twitter that I've been playing Legend of Larry. How many have I done now? Well, I'm I'm play I've, I'm only playing the new Legend of Larrys at the moment. Oh, Legion, sorry, Legion Suit Larry. I keep pronouncing Leisure like you, we do in the UK, even though that's not technically right. Um, I pl like I've played like the 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 new series from Crazy Bunch. I played I played the first one and I thought it was an all right adventure game, but there's a couple of bits I wasn't like a fan of. Uh, the second one so far is weirdly I haven't finished it yet, but it's weirdly like different. Like usually, you see Larry games have like a formula where like you you interact with different women, do things for them, and then Larry almost gets led with them, but something comical happens and then he doesn't. And the first uh, in the reboot series pretty much follows that formula. But the second one has almost been... It almost has the formula of a Monkey Island game. Like, you sail between islands. There's a Governor Marley. Um, it's really bizarre, but, like, interesting. Like, you get components to get a boat and leave an island. It's it's very interesting. Like, structure-wise, I'm like, this is, just feels like Monkey Island parody. And I'm interested to see where it's going. Um, as a British version of American. Yeah. Uh, in America, it's leisure. In, uh, the UK, it's leisure. I... <laughs> so I'm, I'm used to saying leisure. It's a shame I couldn't stream them. I mean, I think you can stream them, but I don't think I'd feel comfortable doing it. If that makes sense. Alright. Abe Lincoln must die. Ah, I did do I did do a video on this one back in the day. The president's lost it. A federally mandated group hugs. A pudding embargo. What's next? Sam and Max are off to Washington to take care of this bozo. But the political climate will only get stormier, and a new power will rise. This is a class. Oh, this intro. Reborn. I will feast on your entrails and devour your soul. <laughs> you know, Max, sneaking the bug into that exorcism was an uncharacteristic stroke of genius. Demonic possession is the gift that keeps on giving. Yeah, the TV bells knock off. What? Oh, Commissioner. <laughs> no, that was uh, Max's aunt. <laughs> yes, 14 packs a day. <laughs> What's that? Yes. Yes? No. Yes? Sweet Suffering St. Sebastian on the sousaphone in a short story by Susan Sontag. We're on our way. Let me guess. Our friendly neighborhood demon just burnt down another monastery. No, Max. We have a far more bloodthirsty adversary this time. 
the president of the United States of America. Who? <laughs> the man's gone nuts. Who? He's enacting all kinds of crazy new laws. What else is new? Federally mandated group hugs before, during, and after all major sporting events. So? He's curtailing civil liberties, threatening the environment. Hey, that makes three of us. And he's about to introduce mandatory gun registration. Get the keys. <laughs> Um, so yeah, the original, uh, episode was actually released when Bush Jr. was president. So the, the president in this is, is very much a parody of Bush Jr. Um, if this had been made now, it probably would be a, a, a Trump stand-in. I do love this intro. And I, lo I love the blue of this episode as well. They remember the post, no bills poster. Yes. As a comment about the uh, Clinton administration. Sam, that we could have avoided this gruesome accident if you just oh, let man. me dry. And I have to point out that we could have avoided this gruesome accident if you hadn't jumped on my head shouting Jersey Devil, Jersey Devil and firing your gun out the window. I swear that woman was a dead ringer for him. Well, here we are, standing in an open field west of the White House. Let's go bring the hammer down on that so-called commander-in-chief. Oh, man. <sighs> so I kind of feel overloaded with nostalgia right now. Like, Abe Lincoln Must Die, this episode. This is the first, like, adventure game I ever played. This is like, this was the game that, like, got me hooked on the genre. I, I, I remember the first time I played this as well. Man. Hey, my missing boxing glove! It's always in the last place you look. Agent Super Bowl. Oh man, the first appearance of Agent Super Bowl. It's one of my favorite characters. The White House pool. Most secure waiting pool on Earth. Any golf balls? Nope. I think there is something in there if you change one of the dates. But we can only do that later though. Jimmy? Oh great! What are you guys doing here? Oh, just saving the world. What are you doing here? I happen to take my vacations at the White House, and I need a little R&R. &R. Speaking of which, beat it. Okay. All right. Valley parking, $2. Way to knock down that deficit. <laughs> hey, this phone only takes Susan B. Anthony dollars. It must be one of those stupid 555 phones. Yes, actually. 555-1984. Five, 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 hmm. Hey, Sam! Did I ever mention how I've memorized pi to 1,000 decimal places? It's 3.14159265358979. Do you have a piece of paper handy? <laughs> you want to write down the phone number? I remember the number. I want to write myself a reminder to smother you with a pillow in your sleep. <laughs> it should have been 5550451. Five, 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 it should have been. I think you're right. <laughs> Suspect yourself. That's so Madonna. All right, this is the uh, oh, the stool. Nice stool. It looks a little like a weird space creature, poised to devour the unwary mortal foolish enough to sit on it. I like that in a stool. <laughs> I actually saw a 0451 reference in one of the Legion Suit Larry reboots. It was, it was the first one. In... There's, a, there's like a lab area, and there's just like, there's like a, it's written down as a code on the wall. It was a very weird game for it to be in, but I was like, oh, look at that. 0451. <laughs> Post no bills. I'm surprised this sign survived the Clinton administration. What is it a reference to? Well, some people think it's a reference to, um, like Fahrenheit 451, but that's actually not true. I was told in the comments of my sanitarium um, video that that was the code that we used at Looking Glass Studios. So I don't know which one is true, but I, I imagine one or the other is possibly true. 
I'm gonna look at all these things first. Your name here. For naming rights to this building, please contact the Office of Desperation Accounting. Oh, oh boy! Can we, Sam? Please? <laughs> we'll see, little buddy. Hmm. White paint, Christmas lights, and a small barbecue. Everything somebody would need to renovate, decorate, and then accidentally burn the place to the ground. Oh, God. Later, Max. Later. <laughs> 0451 one point to looking glass, 451 one point to bribery. That's true, yeah. Step aside, buddy. Freelance police. Just a moment, sir. Papa Bear, this is Super Bowl. Possible situation at the front door. Talking dog and uh, rabbit trying to gain access to the OO. Please advise over. Super Bowl? Yeah, that's a negative on the access permission, sir. <laughs> I'll have to ask you and your little friend to step away from the White House. Oh, Doggy God. Daddy, this is Loose Cannon. Request permission to pants this goon. Over. Super Before we Bowl. try physical violence, Max, let's try dazzling the man with our razor-sharp wit and labyrinthine logical conundrums. Ah, emotional violence. Good plan. Super Bowl is one of my favorite uh, characters. And if you don't get it, um... Oh, uh, well. Did you call yourself Super Bowl? Codename, sir. I'm a bouncer. Secret Service humor. And who's Papa Bear? Section Chief. Runs the operation. Protects the president. Oh, Super Bowl. I get it. Because Super Bowl. Bouncing. He's a bouncer. It's, <laughs> it's such a dumb joke and I love it. Let's go Karen on him. I want to talk to your manager. No can do, sir. He's with the president. Let us in, pal. We're freelance police. Here to save the president. I thought we were here to stop the president by any means necessary. <laughs> I was going to wait to mention that part, Max. Either way, sir, you can't get inside. Orders. His voice sounds really good now. It's a lot more, like, sort of buttery and smooth. Like I said, they got access to the original files, like voice files. Um, so they could, like, eliminate some of the voice compression that was in the original clips. Ah, the voice just sounds so nice now. Seriously, Jack, let us in. It's a national emergency. No can do, sir. Hmm, it's going to be tougher than I thought to trick this goon and get inside. I heard that, sir. And it's going to be impossible. Hey, no fair. You're not supposed to listen to casual asides. It's in the job <laughs> description, sir. Report all stage whispers, soliloquies, and casual asides to the proper authorities. Curse them! They've thought of everything! Finest security force in the world, sir. <laughs> I love this character. Peter Bartle voices Super Bowl. Yeah, Peter Bartle does a few characters in, um, in Seven Max, isn't he? I can't remember uh, all of them, but I know he does more than one. Don't you get bored guarding this door? It's a rewarding job, sir. Doing my part. Keeping the president safe. Hey, Super Bowl! I'd like you to smell these two handkerchiefs and tell me which one smells more like chloroform. Not now, Max. Is that all you do? Guard this door? That's my primary assignment, sir. I'm thinking of a number between 1 and 100. Try to guess it while I drop you know, increasingly heavy weights your head. What's your secondary assignment? Varies. Receptionist, maintenance, light grounds work, public relations. Public relations? I'm a people person, sir. <laughs> they have you guys doing odd jobs, too? Cutback, sir. Employee Reduction and Consolidation Act of 2003. These and sunglasses beepers. aren't cheap. Oh. Hey, Super Bowl! What gauge syringe would be best for injecting you with a knockout serum? Just a hypothetical. You really have time to do everything else and guard this door? I make the time, sir. It's what I do. All right. I want to talk to your oh, manager. Oh, yeah, didn't we? No can do, sir. Okay. I've had enough of this. Papa Bear, this is Super Bowl. Perp's exiting zone four now. Seem disgruntled. Stay on the lookout. Over. Now can we push him down and beat him with sewage-filled garbage bags until he runs crying into the reflecting pool? Tempting, Max. But these Secret Service guys hold a grudge. All right. So we can't get through him just yet. But, um, he did mention that he was a receptionist, so maybe... There is a small mailbox here. call to pick it up. Ah, uh, it's one of those ornamental mailboxes that doesn't actually open. That's government efficiency for you. Alright. So now we have to go back home, and we need to catch up with what Sybil and Bosco are doing anyway. Where are we going, so. Sam? Back to the office. Back to the office. I'll drive! Not while I'm alive. Exactly! All right. Ah, oh, yes, I remember what Sybil's doing in this one. Love is for everyone. She is now doing a dating service. Ooh, look at the heart thing going around. That looks nice. 
They've really found a way to keep things like fresh uh, visually between episodes. It's really nice. Hey, Sybil. What's new in the world of frequent random career reassessment? Hi, fellas. I'm really excited. I found the perfect job for me. You don't say. That's right. I, Sybil Pandemic, am now a professional matchmaker. I thought I smelled phosphorus. <laughs> I thought I smelled that joke coming down the turnpike, burning oil and dragging its muffler. <laughs> it's a dating service, Max. I figured that if a smart, uh. successful career woman like me could be having so much trouble finding a date, there must be plenty of other people who could use help. Sure. You're having trouble finding your soulmate? You don't know the half of it. It seems like all the guys I meet are total losers. No offense. None taken. Hey! Or else they're borderline psychopaths. No offense. None taken. It's the borderline One cases moment. you have to watch out for. Thank you, Halo Warrior 1997, for the subscription with Prime Gaming. Much appreciated. What kind of man are you looking for? Older men. Guys with a little history to them are such a turn on. That's something to oh, remember. And tall men. And distinguished. That's and he should be experienced. Okay. All right, enough already. Yes, I will go out with you, Sybil. <laughs> I thought she was talking about me. <laughs> That's um, something we'll be do, like, talking about later in this game. Um, the whole finding a, a date for Sybil thing. Uh, we don't have to worry about that right now. Could you find dates for Max and me? Seriously? I mean, sure. Why not? Stranger things have happened, I guess. They must have, somewhere. <laughs> I'm choosing not to be offended by that. What do we need to do? It's easy. Just submit an application. Okay, then. What kind of stuff is on this application? The usual. Your best traits and what kind of person you're looking for. Hooks for hands! Hooks for hands! <laughs> when you're done, I'll put the application into my computer which analyzes your personality matrix at 15 hmm. essential compatibility points. I don't have a personality matrix so much as a personality vector. Is that a math Once joke? we found a match, you call your date and agree on a time and place. Just Let you wait, cozy you hours. Tell me your good points and what you're looking for in a date. Um, I'm very spiritual. A disciple of the Ancient Ones, enacting dark magic rituals to bring forth their reign again upon this earth. Rise, Shigarath! Rise, Abyag Solem! <laughs> she should have an air of mystery. Making frequent passing mention to her time on the chain gang, but when pressed, revealing nothing. <laughs> Fair enough, Cozy. She should love animals. Such as the elusive praying mantis, whose deadly but enthralling mating rituals she mimics. You really know how to ruin the mood, Max. <laughs> oh, and cybernetic implants, like an elbow that can connect to the internet. You mean a Shreepin part? Um... I lead an active lifestyle. Always running from the authorities. I can appreciate a person's inner beauty. I even have my own sonogram machine. She should love the outdoors. We frequently lock ourselves out of the office. She should be tall. At least 12 feet, or 4 meters if she's Canadian. <laughs> that's all I can think of. Oh, that's plenty. Now I'll just put your applications into the computer. <laughs> and there it is. Max, it says your perfect match is... Cybernetic laser eyes. Oh, please, oh, please, oh, please. <laughs> Well, that's interesting. It says your perfect match is Sam. Disturbing, and yet somehow not completely unexpected. And <laughs> Sam, your ideal soulmate is... Wait for it. Max. Well, there goes another blow to the concept of a fair and just universe. <laughs> hey, Sam, what do you say we never, ever speak of this again? <laughs> Way ahead of you, little buddy. Oh, they're already married. What's next on the career horizon? Next? This is it. I am having fun with the new version, yes, Trex. Job in helping people find their perfect match. Volcano God. <laughs> good point. That's a good one. I'll stick to the dating business, though. How many couples have you managed to escort to romantic bliss? So far, none. None is the loneliest number. But I've got a feeling things will start to pick up after the holidays. 
All that stress makes for a lot of messy breakups and a lot of people looking for romance on the rebound. So we have something to look forward to. Okay. See you around, Sybil. Well, that's interesting. But we don't have to worry about this right now. Let's go see uh, Bosco and his new disguise. Oh! I forgot he was here in this one. It's Hugh Bliss. Whoa, look, Max. It's our favorite cultish crackpot, Hugh Bliss. Hi, I'm Hugh Bliss. I want to buy something. Take my credit card. Put me on your mailing list. Anyone you want me to recruit? You're supposed to give the Stockholm <laughs> Syndrome a few days to kick in, Max. <laughs> Who has that kind of time? What's a big celebrity like you doing on our street, Hugh Bliss? Why, I, I love how he reflects rainbows now. It's so cool. The magic and science of unlocking the harmony of colors for a revolution in holistic personal and interpersonal well-being? Now translated into 15,000 different languages, including Esperanto. <laughs> Hooray! <laughs> Hooray! Are the books selling well? Selling? You can't put a price on imagination. You can't sell the wonder of a daydream or the laughter of a child. He's right. I've tried. <laughs> Are Oops. the books sell? You can't. He's right. Oh, what was your book about again? Emetics, the handbook for multicolored happiness? It's about everything and nothing at all. Oh. Oh. What's this prismatology nonsense really about? All it is is the total reawakening of mind, body, and spirit in a rainbow of true bliss. Ah. I'm really excited. Uh-huh. And how do we do that? Okay. Simply focus on the orange at the core of your spirit. Okay. Okay. No, wait. Okay, now. <laughs> Shift your consciousness to the ultraviolet. Okay. Doing that. Mix it with the indigo of your imagination, and then let it slide down the rainbow of your hopes and dreams. Wow, I can't believe it was so simple. All right. How do you stay in business? With the magic of volume and free delivery. You can have all the colors delivered to your home for no green. I don't get it. <laughs> Show us a magic trick, Hugh Bliss. Magic is easy when the colors of your soul are... Yeah, ready. yeah, less chatter, more magic. Okay. How about I disappear? Okay, then. Well, your mind reading is obviously still working. <laughs> it is. <laughs> I love how Sam just hates him. Watch me as I vanish. Except you won't be able to watch me because I'll be gone. Oh, you know what? Let's grab this free home delivery sign. Hey, a free home delivery sign. There we go. We're gonna need that at some point. President appoints action figure as Secretary of Defense. That is pretty crazy. Well, at least it was an action figure of John Shaft. Oh, I can dig it non-mafia-owned casino destroyed by mysterious explosion. Mysterious? I gave my name to reporters and even posed for pictures. <laughs> Sometimes blowing something up is its own reward, pal. Gumball machine. Novelty gumballs. Oh. Shaped just like the real thing, but made of inedible plastic. Oh, no. Fool your friends, annoy your grandparents. Okay, then. Purcell attacked by two-headed monkey. That's Steve Purcell. <laughs> What's shaking, Bosco? Ah, greetings, comrades, dog, and rabbit. I'm having trouble placing the accent this month. Mid-Atlantic states? Thank you, San Dan. Fernando Valley? Hmm, the kind words. I get more of a vague Baltic vibe. Something in a light check pattern. Ha ha ha! Comrade Maximilian makes the funny joke. I am Vladimir Ilyevich Boskovorsky, Russian proprietor of workers' glorious warehouse of inconvenience, no? No. <laughs> but now, I make new starts in America, which I love. So, there's no need to aiming sophisticated targeting equipment at me. Okay. What's with the Soviet bloc, Bosco? It's <laughs> perfectly <Soviet> natural, <laughs> comrades. I work with the American government in spirit of Glasnost. They know. They know. Who knows what? The feds, man. Uncle Sam. The government's watching us all the time. So that's why I always feel an overbearing presence just out of my field of vision, watching and judging my every move. <laughs> that's me, Max. 
on that poster in the background, <laughs> the bus goes inconvenience one. That's, that's like really cool. The furnace hat, yeah. By the way, I found out, um, I can't remember, I think it was answered on a Reddit AMA, but one of the new songs they added was this different Bosco's Inconvenience theme. And they made it so it switches between two different Bosco's themes in between episodes. So all the uh, odd episodes are the original theme, and all the even ep episodes are the new theme for Bosco's. Which is really cool. I like that. Why is the government spying on you, Bosco? I don't know. Maybe it's because I know too much. Maybe. Um, Just humor the poor guy, Max. <laughs> but I make new stars in America, which I love. So it's no need to target me. I suppose you've got some ridiculously complex whirligig to defend yourself against the feds? It's the people, comrades. Workers will overthrow fascist regime. Yeah, this is a remaster. What about us loafers? Uh, it just came oh, out, no, um, like Come three days ago. Victory. <laughs> Workers will unite. Very reason. Downfall of corrupt administration. We will number in tens of millions. That's a lot of Bolsheviks. No, it's all true. Plus, I'm working on a satellite missile defense system. Oh. I am the Scarfy guy. Uh, yes, I I'm I'm the one who does the adventure game reviews on YouTube. Uh, I I do Twitch every week, especially adventure games. Uh, nice to see you, Scafield. Scafield. Thanks coming along. And thank you for the follow. We want to buy something. Yeah, is evil, but necessary private enterprise. Yeah, Max finally has a belly button. It's really good. <laughs> what do you got? His most glorious invention, comrades. He's useful for, um, how you say, questioning. Questioning. <laughs> His true serum makes easy even the most difficult, how do you say, uh, Interrogation. Interrogation. <laughs> I love that joke. True serum? Is this another one of your half-baked overpriced gimmicks, or does it actually work? Both. Will make anyone get rid of inhibitions and telling uh, how you say... Is it vodka by any chance? Pretty much. <laughs> honest truth. Your accent sucks. Hey, it's already working. <laughs> We'd like that truth serum, comrade Boscovich. Is good. Price is 867.5309 rubles. How much is that in real money? 100 million dollars. Damn. I think your rate of exchange <laughs> is a little off, Bosko Borski. <laughs> Fall of Berlin Wall brings great strength to our economy. Hey, I'm glad you found me, Scuff. It's always nice when I have somebody who watches my, my uh, channel come through and say, Hey, I didn't know you streamed. Do you have any potatoes in the likeness of Catholic saints? Yet. Okay. Do you have any souvenir snow globes from the Mystery Vortex? Yet. Is that a Hit the Road reference? Can't remember. Do you have any Lobster Fots brand cereal? Yet. Do you have any Tagalog yep. rhyming dictionaries abridged? Yet. Do you have any wiener cozies? Ah, oh, God. We just get shipment of those in this week. Let me look. Oh boy! Oh wait, did you say wiener cozies? I thought you said Navajo blankets. No, we're all out of wiener cozies. Thanks for the uh, follow, Kaitan. Do you have any Navajo blankets? <laughs> Yet. <laughs> but do you have any potatoes in the likeness of Catholic saints? Oh, that's Yet. it. Okay. Nothing for us right now. Yeah, I keep the um, LGBT tag on because, well, a, I'm bi. <laughs> And B, I want this to be like a a safe place for uh, all kinds of LGBT uh, people uh, to come along. I want it's it kind of it's a signal to say, hey, it's safe here. Um, you won't see any like you know homophobia, transphobia, that sort of thing. Um, Cause I love y'all. It's a safe space, exactly. Something in here smells like fermented hate. It's like sweaty jock straps soaked in boiled cabbage with a dash of sulfur. That's Keep it down, just, guys. Uh, You're scaring off pretty the other specific. customers. What other customers? Max and I are always the only ones in here. <laughs> what? I mean, it's good thing. Merchandise is always available. Coming in here is like visiting old friends. Some of these cereal boxes are from the McKinley administration. 
I oh, carved goodness. our initials in one of the weenies, so we'll be best friends forever, Sam. Well, nowhere is completely safe, but we can always try our best. When's the last time you cleaned out the weenie rotisserie? Needs no cleaning. Adds vintage flavor to tasty francs. See you later, Bosco. Is no Bosco, comrades. His only loyal worker, Bosco. You sit down and go through the original again. Who is not ready to glorious Yeah, I mean, I'll probably still play through there. like the original from time to time, but um, I think the I'm probably going to play this version more often. If anything goes on here, you can count on mods giving him a swift, swift kick in the pants. Yes. That's exactly true. Um, I don't think there's anything we need here right now. I do like the new Bosco's theme. And I, it fits in perfectly. And that's what's great about some of the new songs. Is like... They... Um, <laughs> they feel like they were always part of the game. Come down on bigotry with a swift rage. Hell yeah. <laughs> All right. We need to head back to the office, actually. Um, posters. Hold on. What do they say? I can't actually see. I examine them. I can't read them. Yeah, it's your power level. Hell yeah. So basically, we need to make a call to the White House and get Super Bowl out the way. Who are you calling? Oh yeah, Sam? it's it's the original composer doing all the new songs, uh, Jared Emerson Johnson, um, who was like did a lot of the music for Telltale for like a really long time. Okay, check on Leonard. Oh yes, we do need to do that. Mr. Pizza. What happens if we call Mr. Pizza? Mr. Pizza. Two medium pineapple and asbestos pies, please. Oh, yeah? Well, same to you, jerk. What'd he say? Thank you, and have a nice day. <laughs> Who are you calling, Sam? The White House. White House. Agent Super Bowl speaking. Um... Have you checked the baby? I just want to try different yes, things. Sir, sleeping soundly. <laughs> oh, good job, then. All right. Who are you calling, Sam? The White House. White House. Agent Super Bowl speaking. Um. Hello. Please hold. Roger that. <laughs> Our phone bill is sure going to be expensive this month. It's okay, Max. I've been paying them out of your retirement fund. <laughs> Hello. Is anyone there? All right. Let's go see how Leonard's doing. It's our favorite shifty card cheat, Leonard Steak Charmer. How you doing, Leonard? Give me the that scam. It's Spencer. Give me that. You like to me? Good, good. <laughs> All right then. Have fun, Leonard. Oh, hold on. Oh, my prosthetic gallbladder. Oh no. Well, I'm going to take the TV. Oh. God, yeah. I, I always forget that there are loads of running gags that I miss. The uh, non-binary flag for it's an NB. Haha! -ha. Nice. Also, um, this is something I haven't seen many people mention, but I'm pretty sure the mix on the office theme is... Uh, slightly different. Like, the, the piano is a little bit different. It's like, it's mostly the same, but the piano is just ever so slightly different. Hey, let's shoot the water dispenser. I don't think so. I don't think it does anything if you try to. I wouldn't want to hurt poor defenseless Mr. Spatula. Okay. Just that. My fellow Americans, oh, here he is. must remember to live <laughs> life to the fullest and keep joy in our hearts. To that end, I have introduced mandatory psychological examinations to guarantee that all citizens meet the minimum required level of joy and goodwill. He's like a kinder, gentler Mussolini. <laughs> is that a real, is that a compliment? I don't think it is. <laughs> all right. Uh, let's head back. 
Where are we going, Sam? We're off to the White House. Oh, boy! Was that a, a check-in voice line going, where are we going, Sam? That was a bit jarring. Is anyone there? Hello. All right, well, now we can just go in. Hello. Hello. Oh, it's loading. Now, a lot of these same folks will say that we're wrong for introducing this federal pudding embargo. They envy our freedom. I ask you, what have they got to hide? Unless they're secretly sitting on stockpiles of pudding, and oh yes, we will find them. They've got nothing to be afraid of. So in conclusion, America, get your back up off the wall. Dance, come on, marzipan and good night. It's worse than we thought, Max. He's crazier than a caffeine-addled dingo in an Adelaide maternity ward. I think he makes a lot of good points. <laughs> Those puddings are trying to steal our jobs. <laughs> and I especially like how he does that spinny thing with his eyes. By the whiskey-soaked beard of Ulysses S. Grant. That's it. The president's not crazy. He's been hypnotized. We've got to snap him out of it, Max. And pronto. How do we do that again? We hit him over the head, like we do with all hypnotized people. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> oh. This is, I love this area. The Oval Office. The theme is great. House of Representatives and Gardens. The Liberty Bell is a light for this room, just as America is a light for... Yeah. Metaphor is such an ugly quality in furniture. <laughs> Hands off the cameras! No. It's a stack of pithy campaign slogans. Oh, don't fool with those! Wouldn't want to be caught on national TV with my drawers down, again. <laughs> oh, the monkey. She is, uh... There he is. Oh, God. Are these pictures of you with cardboard cutouts of other presidents? Oh, my God. We're all cardboard under the skin, son. <laughs> Funny how almost anything makes sense if a president says it. This snow globe has a little Apollo 13 inside. Civil guy from the what London Exchange. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm afraid to find out. Take a look at that. I love this country. <laughs> nice globe. Amazing how often I need it in this job. <laughs> Good day, Mr. President. We come in peace, as far as you know. <laughs> oh, finally, the interpreters. Where have you been? Uh, interpreters? Yeah, that is why you fellas are here, right? Sure, why not? Because I got a meeting with one of them foreign dignitaries. Always talking that crazy space language. Who are you meeting with today? Heck if I know. They show up and start jabbering away about treaties and whatnot. I just let the interpreters figure it out. <laughs> I just keep an eye on them to make sure they don't steal something or try to eat the cat. I do love the way uh, the president is animated because it does, you know, lead into the, uh, the eventual reveal. <clears throat> We're ready to start interpreting. That's aces, fellas. But the dignitary hasn't shown up yet. Show yourselves around the office. But don't touch nothing. But not touching nothing means we have to touch something. Snap out of it, Mr. President. You've been hypnotized. Shaw, sure, I haven't been hypnotized. That's crazy talk. You've got to listen to us, sir, or we'll be forced to take drastic action. Don't talk to me about drastic action. You ever been pinned down in a drugstore parking lot by a pack of muskrat commandos with nothing left to lose? Ever had to uh, gnaw your best buddy's leg off just so you could get his socks and put them on your own ears to fend off the enemy's deadly sonic regurgitator ray? Now that's crazy wow. talk. I'm impressed. Wake up, Mr. President. You've never given up on anything in your life. Don't start now. That's awful nice of you fellas, but I haven't been hypnotized. Now do we commence with the head trauma, Sam? <laughs> what was that? We'll have to get the president alone, Max. Freelance police, you're under arrest. Freelance police? Now there's the kind of can-do vigilante attitude that makes America strong. Finally, someone who appreciates our greater calling. Seriously, you're under arrest. Oh, you can't arrest me. 
foolish chief executive? Does he not fear us? <laughs> Trust us, Mr. President. It's for your own good. Nah, see, it's the Secret Service regulations. I can't leave the Oval Office. Keep up the good work, Mr. President. You've got to know when to I know, I know what I'm no doing, don't worry. The man's a genius, Sam. I almost feel bad for doing this. It's for the good of the country, Max. I just like going through all the dialogue trades and stuff. Hands off, boy! That's my presidential calendar! Hey, Mac. Do you work here? What tipped you off? We're freelance police, buddy. This is a national emergency. And we don't yeah, appreciate very your intimately. sassy <laughs> mouth. Auditions for new White House pet are down the hall. This can only end in violence. Hmm, hmm. this guy's voice sounds familiar. Do you recognize him, Max? Half the time, I don't even recognize you, Sam. <laughs> I'm over here, little buddy. Who said that? <laughs> Do I know you from somewhere? Yeah, I'm that voice that. in the just back of your head that tells you to mind your own business. Ideally, maybe? The I don't know. The old threats, the surly tone. I've got it. You're that pit boss from the Toy Mafia. I smell a conspiracy. You smell a nosy dog who's going to get smacked if he don't stop asking questions. Damn. What's the Toy Mafia got to do with the Secret Service? What toy <laughs> mafia? This is oh, definitely not my good, first playthrough. Man. The Orso Nostra, the sacred organization you probably like Max into in a time oh, honored ceremony. The one that we infiltrated, repeatedly duped, and then blew up in a fiery explosion of death and property damage. I was going to casually forget to mention that part, Max. That's a very entertaining story, Chowderheads. Now run along and play whilst I protect the leader of our country. I think I've played this episode at least, uh, at least five times, maybe. But yeah, this isn't even the first time I've streamed this. I streamed this, like, a couple of years ago. For sure. Oh, <laughs> seeing I play through. I think somebody may have hypnotized the president while you weren't looking. You, perhaps. Very funny. What do you do around here? I give out free t-shirts to the visitor who asks the dumbest question of the day. Please accept my apologies, but we're all out of husky boys' sizes. Damn, that's Woo, mean. Double burn! I thought you were on my side, Max. <laughs> I just call him like I see him, Sam. Um, I think I streamed like the first two episodes of season three, but I never finished it. Uh, when the remaster comes out, I'll definitely do it though. Uh, you're the president's personal bodyguard. Yeah, you can you see his eyes now. Quick. We need to have a it's private meeting settling. with the president. National security. Go right ahead. I meant private, as in wait outside and we'll call you when we need you. And national security, as in we need to clobber the president on the head to break his hypnotic trance. Your gift for subterfuge is uncanny, Max. <laughs> and that's uncanny as in you two try anything and I'll plug you. Oh no. You need to update your nail polish, Kiwi. How do I feel about season three? I like it a lot. Um, I think it's uh, very weird and different, but like not in a bad way. Uh, I, I think it was maybe the right call to kind of break out the formula for a little bit, uh, even though we never, didn't get anything else beyond it. But it's it's a really great story. Um, perhaps a bit more dramatic than Summer Max needs to be, but again, the emotional bits actually did work. You're always with the president? Even when he's got a... You know... Always. I never leave his side. Your codependency sickens me. And it sickens me in exactly the same way, doesn't it, Max? I mean, Sam. <laughs> What's behind that door? It's a private club for people who aren't annoying me. You two ain't invited. Oh. Should we pummel him together, Sam, or would you rather take turns? We can create a national security incident after we've saved the president, Max. Seriously, pal, what's behind that door? It is a much darker season. It's the door to the war room, with unrestricted access to the United States' entire arsenal of long-range missile weapons. Ooh, fun. There's no part of that sentence I didn't like. Then it's unanimous. We'd like a tour. Nobody gets into the war room during peacetime. Stay away from it, or I'll have to escort you out. Ah, surely he doesn't mean that. We'll be back. I cannot wait. Okay. I think you might need to chill, Frank. Hmm. Throw pillows shaped like stars. Interesting, since actual stars are shaped more like throw pillows. 
Nutcracker Washington? Hi, I'm George Washington. Anyone need their nuts cracked? <laughs> Please don't make fun of George Washington. <laughs> you do it again. Hi, I'm George Washington. Oh. <laughs> Please don't make fun of... Okay, I was hoping it would be more than one, but oh well. Oh, he's got a copy of Emetics. That can't be foreshadowing for any reason, could it? This urn says Fluffy on it. Oh no. Wasn't that Warren G. Harding's nickname? Fluffy was the name of the uh, the, the dog you shoot in the last episode. Well. No one enters the war room. That's it. You two are coming with me. Ow, 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 ow. And stay out. Hello. Now I have to get back to the president. He's not supposed to be alone. Excuse Hello. me. Hello. I guess he's back. Oh, welcome, Governor Wizard. The president has been waiting for you. Is anyone there? Governor Wizard? Hey, who better to run a state than a washed-up, urination-loving former child star? No one. Hello. This is All right. House. Um, and you can just go back in. Even though you get kicked out, you can you can literally just walk back <laughs> right back in. It's great. Hello. Is anyone? There? No, sir. I said soda abuse. It's a very important issue. Was I? No, comprende, son. But I'm speaking English. <laughs> ah, are, are you two fellas the interpreters? It's about time. Darndest thing, we just had a couple imposters in here. Dead ringers for you two. Were they walking around examining everything and engaging everyone in pointless conversations? Those are the ones. Those accursed clones. When will their devilish mimicry end? Help me out with hey, this here him? potentate, would you? Can't understand a dang word. But that doesn't make sense. I don't even have an accent. Oh no, momento, por favor. You impatient little guy, ain't he? All right. Uh, let's get going. Hello, Mr. President. We're ready to interpret. We're ready to interpret for you. All right. Let's get this party started. <laughs> Mr. President, my fellow Americans, I come to warn you about a serious epidemic facing our country. The scourge of soda abuse. Many former pop heads like all the myself dialogue options. All find right. ourselves in the endless oh, well. cycle of addiction and elimination until we believed there was no hope. I don't know what you're saying, son, but you're selling it, boy. Good job. I ask you. How long can this epidemic continue? What was that? He said. He said. Let's, let's tell him the truth then. For, first of all, like a prepared die, capitalist oppressor. How long can this epidemic continue? Epidemic? What's this about an epidemic? The epidemic. The war songs are much later abuse, on, Kiwi. No worries. Sir, by 2010, four out of five children will be addicted to soda. And the impact on our wow. nation's plumbing system that was 10 years will ago. be disastrous. What was that? Uh, the epidemic of surly, listless teens. That is a problem. I blame the video games. What does that have to do with anything? I think he's confused. Let's start again from the top. <clears throat> Once again, Mr. President. The impact of soda abuse on our nation's health cannot be overstated. I ask again, how long can this epidemic continue? Great job, great job. What do you say? He said. He said. Prepare to die, capitalist oppressor. Are you trying to pick a fight with me, son? <laughs> no, I'm just trying to educate you on a very important issue. What did he say? He said. <laughs> <laughs> we will lay waste to your cities and dance upon the bones of your children. I think I've heard just about enough. Soda abuse is a difficult topic, sir. But if you'll just hear me out... Beg for your life and I will kill you last. <laughs> Wait a second. I heard that. That's not what I said at all. What was that? It uh, loses something in the translation. <laughs> Let's start over from the top. Where was I? Oh, right. Soda abuse. How long can this epidemic continue? there are other continue? ones we can try in the second, again? second way said. around, so... Uh, How long can... There you go about an epidemic again. What epidemic? Denying the problem won't make it go away, Mr. President. I know President. the right solution what for this. That? Um, Baseball fever. Baseball fever. It's sweeping the nation. You said it, son. The crack of the bat, the roar of the crowd. 
But you know my favorite part? The frosty cold sodas. Are you mocking me, Mr. President? <laughs> Try it again from the top, Wizard. Where was I? Oh, how right. long can come again? He said. He said. Oh, there you go about it. denying skip, skip, the problem. Skip. Whoa! What was that? He said something about soda abuse. Blah blah. Whatever. Hmm. Sounds like one of them touchy feely tax and spend welfare programs. He said. Hmm. Sounds like one of those. I heard what he <laughs> said. Are you guys sure you're translating correctly? Don't blame us, buddy. You're the one with a speech impediment. Try it again from the top, wizard. Where was I? Okay. All oh, right. And there's Soda a few more abuse. in the capital. Uh, capital How is long can roots. this epidemic continue? Come again? He said. Your reign of terror. And that's different. Your reign of terror ends today. Those are fattened words, boy. <laughs> but soda abuse is a very serious problem. What was that? Um. Don't you realize that I've always loved you? Oh, well, I'm flattered, son, but I'm afraid it wouldn't work out between us. What are you talking about? Is he taking it well? <laughs> Back up, wizard. There'll be other presidents. <laughs> I don't understand. They're confused, wizard. Try it again from the top. Where was I? Oh, how okay. come again? Okay, uh, there's one more we can try, I think. Pre are you trying? No! I what did he say? Uh, men, launch the dragoons. Our victory is at hand. Hold on there, son. We can still find a peaceful solution to this. That's all we want. The Mount Rushmore Soda Abuse Prevention Program will bring peace to the lives of soda addicts everywhere. Aim Destructo Beam at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. Fire on my mark. Three, two... Wait! I heard that! That's not what I said at all! I must have misheard you. Let's start over. Where was I? Oh, how okay, let's, again? let's do it properly now. So this is, this is the one one you've got to uh, got to try. What's a guy got to do to get a drink around here? Aha! Uh -huh. I know what you need. An ice cold orange sugar fizz. I swear by it. No, that's not what I want at all. I must resist. But I think there's more dialogue options here we can thirsty. try actually. And just one couldn't hurt. Frosty cold and so delicious. All the progress I've made. They were about to give me my five-week pin. <laughs> I almost feel bad about this. I don't have a conscience, Sam. What's your excuse? <laughs> oh, blessed angels of carbonation. Fill me with your syrupy nectar. Ew. <laughs> yeah, now I'm not so much guilty as repulsed. Yeah. Keep it coming. More! I need more! I need... So they found new? I need a There might be updated texture-wise, but I think the they're mostly the same. Um, let's try different ones first, but... Um, I mean, the right solution is to tell them to go to the war room, because that gets them thrown out. Um, let's try Lincoln's bedroom. Which way is Lincoln's bedroom? Oh, you do not want to go there, son. Place smells like a mausoleum in winter. But if you really want to see it, it's down the hall to your right. Sam, did you just make an innocent person defile one of the most famous rooms in U.S. history? <laughs> Apparently I did. Where was I? Oh, right. Soda abuse. How long can this epidemic continue? All right. Come again? He said, I need another soda. No problem. I've got plenty of soda. Yes. I love that the globe is just, it just has sodas in it. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's the stuff. I've already forgotten where the bathroom is. All right. Which way is the bathroom? Let's send him to the war room then. Oh, the Watergate Hotel. Oh, my God. Let's try this one. Which way is the Watergate Hotel? I, I don't know. I, I don't just know, have to son. know. I've never been. You've never been to the bathroom? Tricky Dick was a big fan of the place, I hear. Did horrible things there. <laughs> Un-American things. Oops, I think I translated that wrong. He asked, where is the reflecting pool? Out the front door, right in front of the Washington Monument. Can't miss it. That was fast. Where was I? Oh, right. Okay. Soda Let's abuse. get this right now. Ugh. How long can this well, This is another interesting continue. one that I haven't tried yet. Come again? He said, I need another soda. No problem. Yes. Let's get through this. Oh, 
yeah! That's the stuff! I've already... Which way is the bathroom? All right. Which way is the war room? <laughs> it's that door right over there! But I don't... Oh, thank you! Where do you think you're going? I've got to get in there! Bad! We've got a priority red number two here in the Oval <laughs> Office. No, it's just number one! <laughs> Escorting the suspect to holding cell for interrogation? Come with me, sir. But it'll only take a second. Please, let me go! That was fun! Okay, now I didn't catch all that. What did he say? <laughs> all right, well, the president's alone now. Let's knock his block off. Now it's time for some checks and balances, freelance police style. Max, will you do the honors? Gladly. Look it, fellas. My fingertips look like little tadpoles. <laughs> they just don't make these guys like they used to. That's no guy, Max. It's a damned ugly puppet. Ah, the drawstring in his back should have been our first clue. The <laughs> first clue should have been the swirly eyes. But, silly me, I thought hypnotizee, not hypnotizer. What? Yes, an ingenious device being used to hypnotize the TV-watching public. But who was controlling him? Gonna take days to get that smell out of the interrogation room. What? What have you done? Uh, he was like that when we got here. Sam did it! <laughs> <laughs> so these two numbskulls managed to off the president. It was a deep tissue massage gone horribly wrong. Ninjas! Sam did it! <laughs> Still, ratings from the last State of the Union address were even lower than reruns of Midtown Cowboys. I didn't expect to have to replace the president so soon. Now that these idiots have forced my hand, uh, we're standing right here. <laughs> we can hear everything you're saying. It's time for a leader that people will have to listen to. Agents Jackson, Burr, and the Gambe. We are moving the timeline forward. Commence phase two of the operation. I'll prepare the new candidate. Oh, here he comes. All on his day himself. Not quite the reaction I would have expected from a Secret Service agent discovering two people over the decapitated body of the president. What do you think this fake body is made of? Can I keep it? No time for that now, Max. We've got to stop the... Wait, what's that noise? Oh, there's a joke coming up that I really love. Oh, it's loading. Blessed scuba diving boot on I love this line. with cocktail onions and a map to the stars' homes. Yeah! They've reanimated America's most beloved president. I always thought Taft was short. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Not Taft, you deficient. My it's fellow Taft Americans, <laughs> I am Abraham Lincoln. As you know by now, your president was recently murdered by two mysterious interpreters. But turn not to fear and despair. I have returned to guide us through this troubled time. A vote for me is a vote for Abraham Lincoln. I'll get it! What's that? Uh-huh. Lincoln Memorial. Right. Hydraulic motors and robotic implants. Yes. Okay. I see. We're on it. Wrong number? That was the commissioner, Max. If this new Mecha Lincoln wins Mecha the Lincoln. emergency election, the nefarious forces controlling him will have unchecked power to destroy the entire free hey, world. Hey, thanks for the five bits in it, when they do that. That's why one of us is going to have to run against him. Second you favorite fictional the depiction of Abraham Lincoln. Okay, What's your first fair, favorite? Fair. Max, we're going to make you the next president of the United States. Yes! Yeah, it's not how it works, but it's a game. <laughs> uh, so now we have to make Max um, the president. And there's a puzzle with these cue cards, and there's a whole bunch of other things. Basically, we have to not necessarily make Max seem electable, but um, make Lincoln seem unelectable. Mr. Lincoln, as a candidate for office, my pal Max would like to engage in a thoughtful discussion of the key issues. Followed by a round of spiteful mudslinging. Hmm, I see. Well, this is a bit irregular. As you're well aware, I'm the most beloved president <laughs> in history. So I just assumed I'd be running unopposed. Oh, no, you didn't. You ain't all that. 
I freed the slave. I was star of a popular television sitcom. I'm on the penny. I was on TV. Now, gentlemen, we can resolve this like adults through moderate <clears throat> reason debate. Very well, then. In the spirit of democracy, I say, bring it. <laughs> and it's a beautiful day on the White House lawn as we bring you the first in a series of debates for this emergency election for U.S. President. In the Republican corner, we have the giant animated statue of Abraham Lincoln. And representing the random violence and destruction party, there is the hyperkinetic rabbit-like creature known as Max. <laughs> Acting as completely impartial moderator for the debates will be Sam. The candidates are ready, so let's listen in. I just love how, like, Max needs boxes to get at the podium, but Lincoln is just way taller. <laughs> um, so we can ask him questions and he'll look at the cue cards. How do you plan to solve the problem of toxic waste? <clears throat> I'm glad that I've been given one more life to give for my country. And Lincoln is once again using his trusted campaign slogan, which is pleasing the crowd, but having no effect on his poll ratings. Okay, so we got all these we got all these questions with the issues that we can talk about, that's but he'll just read off now. the cue card that's Keep on, the, on the thing. I'm ready we'll for need to anything. get some more uh, cue cards. Luckily, we've already got one. Um, but if we can get him to say specific things about specific issues, then, you know, we can basically get people to turn against him. Mr. Lincoln, perhaps you'd like to speak about the importance of family values. Of course. A strong family unit is the rock upon which our society is built. It is a really it's great puzzle. I love this. In this age of your blinged out horseless carriages and racy daguerreotype magazines to believe that honesty and fidelity are outdated concepts. You always have to make but him I feel like proud. seem... Um, I have been completely faithful to my lovely yeah. wife, Mary make it even faithful for over seven score years. I've never even looked at another woman. Okay. Let's see what Max is saying. Greetings, miserable proles. <laughs> People of Earth, your day of reckoning is at hand. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. This election reminds me of a droll story. I love story. this one. <laughs> it seems Chester A. Arthur and the Pope were kayaking down the Amazon one day. Suddenly, a tiny Kandiru fish swims up the Pope's and lodges itself in his Arthur grabs the Pope's pliers and swelled up like a melon. And the Pope says, thanks. Last time that happened, McKinley wanted a <laughs> No, wait, wait, wait. I think I told it wrong. Uh... I believe in the ideal of a global community, where America is but a small part. We must set aside our differences and work with our fellow nations, all united towards one goal. The complete and utter annihilation of the godless Belgians. I mean, they do make good chocolate, though. I want to see a return to the prosperity of the America we once knew. A chicken in every pot and vice versa. Pot in every chicken? If elected, I promise a return to a happier time in America's past. The days when giant thunder lizards marched over the fern-covered marshes of the Midwest, preying on the upstart mammals. Oh, yeah. I'm a uniter, not a divider. I foresee an America under one rule, an iron-fisted rule. One rabbit, one law. Let your neighbors know that dissent will not be tolerated. All hail, Max. <laughs> I have a dream, America. It starts out where I'm in an all-nude production of Death of a Salesman on Ice. But I haven't studied, and I can't remember my lines. Suddenly, it begins to rain marshmallows. But that's okay, because trees are made of graham crackers, and chocolate bars are the official currency. Nice. I believe that by working together, we can make that dream a reality. We have nothing to fear but fear itself. And the chupacabra, Madre de Dios, he'll kill us all. <laughs> all right. That is all. Stay frosty, America. Max would be the best leader. <laughs> oh, look, it's the president's severed head. It's the severed head of the president. I yearn to hold it aloft and turn <clears throat> giant sea atrocities to stone. You're thinking of Medusa's head. Oh, yeah. I always get those two heads confused. 
All right. Um, well, we have this cue card. Let's put that on. Free home delivery. It's time for another in this ongoing series of debates between Abraham Lincoln and Max. So let's go over the issues. We turn you over to our impartial moderator, Sam. Let's go for the issues and... Mr. Um, Lincoln, I'd like you to tell the voters your stand on some of the tough issues. The head of state. Right. Hey, nice. Um, so toxic waste. This is, this is what this one is for. How do you plan to solve the problem of toxic waste? Free home delivery. Ooh, an effective but very <laughs> controversial proposal from candidate Lincoln. And the crowd did not like that idea one Hey, bit. thanks for the follow, Yeet Child. All right, Ned. <laughs> that is a uh, no longer very topical joke, the Nader reference. All right, uh, there's one more thing we can do right, while we're right here, and that is using the bug. Mr. Lincoln, would you like to say a few words to the audience? <clears throat> Thank you. This is a date that will be remembered for centuries to come. Today is the day we return America to greatness. Ooh, that age, I weirdly. stand here at the steps of the White House, not above the people, but with the people. Only one man can lead the nation through this troubled time. I, Abraham Lincoln, am that man. The time to act is now. Thank you. I've heard better addresses from the 411 operator. What did you just say? Hey, Lincoln! <laughs> Captain Ahab called! He wants his beard back! I'm gonna slap you silly, you little punk. <laughs> Save it for the debate, Max. Uh, all right, um... Oh, where's that bug? Hold on. Oh, there it is. Okay, it's and Lincoln's we campaign need... flyer. I want you, honest, dedicated, over a century of experience. Abraham Lincoln is your man. If you're uh, keeping up with the, some of the phrases being used, you might be catching on to what we're doing with this. You might remember that Sybil uh, is on the lookout for a Where date. Where are you going, Sam? Um, to the office. And she wanted Shotgun. someone tall, distinguished, with a lot of experience, an older man. I wonder if Lincoln fits the bill. Oh, there's also something over here we can grab. A placard that says, Give me all you've got. Recruiting slogan. That's a lot better than their old one. What are you, chicken? Gonna cry now, baby? Apparently, there's no room in the military budget for quality adhesives. <laughs> we'll take it. All right. Okay, Sybil. We have the man for you. What's this? A new application? Yeah, it's uh, for a friend of ours. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Not the Abraham Lincoln. He's tall, distinguished, loves the theater. Loved the he theater. Sounds perfect. Past tense. That chump doesn't have half my cute, fluffy marketability. Do you think there's the fluffy marketability line? Computer, nothing. This guy sounds perfect for me. I thought I remember that line. Oh, but he didn't but it wasn't leave in the his last phone episode. number. Next time you see him, give him my number. I'd love to meet him. And now we have actually his voice on recording with the uh, with the bug. So you know, let's just uh, do a little bit of uh, matchmaking for ourselves. Uh, phone. Who are you calling, Sam? Sybil. Sybil. Um, yep. I, Abraham Lincoln, am that man. Oh, well, Mr. President, <laughs> it's just, it's just such an honor to talk to you. I saw your application, and I was wondering, would you like to go out sometime? Uh, 
uh, yeah. This is a date that will be remembered for centuries to come. <laughs> oh my, you are a charmer, aren't you? Well then, Mr. Rail Splitter, where would you like to meet? Um, steps to the White House. I stand here at the steps of the White House. At the White House, got it. What time should I meet you? Um, the time to act is now. I'm going to slap you silly, you little punk. Whoa. What? I didn't catch that last part. I will feast on your entrails and devour your soul. Now that's a bit too kinky. What? Abe? What's going on? Uh, see you soon. Gotta go. <laughs> so, to sum up, Family values are the bedrock of this nation. Our fidelity, honesty, and loyalty to family is our most sacred asset as Americans. Candidate Max, your rebuttal? <laughs> Yoo-hoo, Mr. Lincoln! I believe we have a question in the audience from someone who is not Candidate Lincoln's wife. Oh, hi, Sam. Hi, Max. Greetings, random harlot. Abe, I'm here. Are you ready for yeah, a Yeah, Sybil deserves better. <laughs> I've never seen this woman before in my life. But on the phone, you sounded so eager to meet me. Listen to me, America. I did not arrange a date with this woman. <laughs> oh, so she's good enough to fool around with, but not to date. Mr. Lincoln, I can't believe you're doing this to me. <laughs> We're adventure game protagonists, we kind of have to be horrible people. <laughs> oh, I think that's the old Sybil model on the newspaper, actually. I think what's funny as well is when you're decreasing the um, the votes, it's not necessarily that you're taking that you're taking Lincoln's votes, you're just um, giving them to Nader instead. <laughs> um, I think there's more cue cards in here that we haven't looked at. I'm glad that I've been given one more life to give for my country. Thank you for the five bits, cute Pyro. Merry Christmas from all the men gang. Ah, how nice. I, I give a Merry Christmas back to the men gang also. Two wrongs don't make a right. Oh, yes. This is one of them we can do. Contestants, it's time for our lightning round. Mr. Lincoln, I'm going to name some of the tough issues facing our country today. I'd like you to sum up your stand on those issues in a few concise words. Well, all right. I'm afraid this will have to be completely off the top of my head, <clears throat> as I have nothing prepared. Uh, religion and schools. Where do you stand on religion and schools? Two wrongs don't make <laughs> a right. Did we hear that right? Lincoln just came down against both religion and education. Wow, that's got to hurt him in the polls. All the newspapers have the old models on, yeah. See, Max hasn't gone up at all. <laughs> all right, and we should be able to do this one for the tax plan. Give me all you got. Give me all you got. This is a great puzzle. I love Contestants, this. Contestants, it's time for our lightning round. It's so Mr. creative Lincoln, and funny. I'm going to name some of the tough issues facing our country today. I'd like you to sum up your stand on those issues in a few concise words. Well, all right. I'm afraid this will have to be completely off the top of my head, as I have nothing Take off the top prepared. of your head. How would you describe your tax plan? Give me all you've got. And candidate Lincoln has proposed one shocker of an economic strategy, which even Democrats are calling a trifle excessive. That even had to Democrats. Have hurt him in the <laughs> All right, there we go. The results from the emergency election are coming in, and it appears that former sitcom star Max has been elected president of the United States. Voters make best of horrible situation. Of that sounds familiar. <laughs> Political parties have desperately asked for a recount. Let's cut to the White House lawn oh God. to hear candidate Lincoln's address. You've <laughs> got to be bing me, you idiots. He took the news much better than expected. 
democracy, I will make you all my hypnotic slaves! <laughs> Max, that robotic Abe Lincoln will enslave the entire East Coast if we don't stop him. Who cares? I'm the president of the U.S. Let's go bomb someone into oblivion. Not just anyone, Max. Abe Lincoln must die. Yes! All right. I believe we can now get the achievement because there's a little hidden Easter egg. Um, oh, there's a little detail Finally, about the. Uh, Mr. President, you're here. Oh God. That's the president. People will vote for anyone these days. <laughs> Obviously. What's that supposed to mean? It means. Never mind. Look, Max. All the soda poppers are here. I don't have time for foreign dignitaries. Check out all the cool stuff on my new desk. Um, there's a little detail about uh, the music um, going in the background. When it actually changes the music slightly when Max is president. Like, there's like this sort of there's a sound that almost sounds like a train going by to me. I don't know how to explain it. It's like the that bit. It reminds me of a train. I don't know why, but it's like, it, it kind of adds a bit more chaos to the song. It's really perfect. I, I love that little detail. All right. Hey, we know that we're in charge. It's we can the official change United the date. States calendar. Twelve of the hottest Supreme Court justices in their skimpiest, naughtiest swimsuits. Even better, Max. You can actually change the official date. Oh, boy. Uh, let's put it. East Sunday. We now declare today April 8th, Easter Sunday. Cripes, we'd better start hiding eggs on the White House lawn. Already did it, Sam. Max, are these the eggs that are made of metal and shaped like a pineapple and <laughs> have a pin in them? Don't be silly, Sam. I took the pins out first. This game is always meant to be the free episode. Yeah, I can, I can, you can kind of tell, definitely. I mean, it, it worked for me to buy the games. Um, like, it, it sold me on the series. So, yeah. Hey, an Easter egg. You mean a carefully hidden item of absolutely no actual value? Exactly. And that's the achievement. <laughs> Whee! All right. So, yeah, if you change the day to Easter Sunday, um, that's pretty much it. You can... <laughs> You can get an Easter egg from the from the golf hole. Um, you can also do stuff with the national budget. Hey, look, Max, it's the presidential discretionary budget. You have one hundred million dollars. One hundred million dollars. Whatever you want. What a delightfully random and convenient figure. Well, unfortunately, none of those are really worth putting money on right now. We'll come back to that later. Let's talk to the soda poppers. Look, Max. It's our old pal. <clears throat> Look, Grand Imperial Warlord Maximus Optimus, Keeper of the Seven Keys. It's our old pal, the former child star and embarrassing idol semi-finalist, Peepers. That's <clears throat> former child star and embarrassing idol semi-finalist, Governor Peepers. <laughs> You're a governor too? That's right, I got North Dakota. Oh. North Dakota, the leftover state. I thought it was North Dakota, still warmer than Saskatchewan. Hey, be nice. We've got a rich and varied history. North Dakota, hope you like snow. North Dakota, come climb all over our big white butte. Hey! Sorry, I got caught up in the moment. <laughs> also in the MS DOS Sound Max game. Um, I like it. It's it's a very difficult game, actually. The puzzles are quite hard and hit the road, but um, I do think it's a great game. What's there to do in North Dakota? I did a stream of it Wacky. last year. Snowmen, snow angels, snow forts, snowball fights, homemade ice cream, and of course the majesty of Mount Rushmore. That hasn't been decided yet. Right, I spoke too soon. <laughs> what business do you have in the Oval Office? We need the president to settle custody of Mount Rushmore. Max has the presidential pen. Somewhere. Just tell me where to sign. Great, the problem is solved. But seriously, if you guys see the president, tell him we're waiting. Max really is president now. It was in the papers. 
We haven't been watching the news back in Fargo. We've been so busy with the arms buildup. What was that? Uh, did I say arms buildup? <laughs> I meant Winter Paradise toboggan and scrapbooking jamboree. Can't we all just get along? We can if we all just keep quiet and avoid another incident. Yep, he's Honesty the president. Honesty is really <laughs> the best policy. All us presidents know that. So long, peeps. All right, let's talk to Wizard again. Welcome back, Governor Wizard. <clears throat> Here to give another demonstration on soda abuse. That's not funny. Why should your state get Mount Rushmore? Because they just want it for tourism. But my plan will save lives. It'll become a monument to soda abuse prevention. Okay. People will realize that just like Washington, Jefferson, Roosevelt, and the other guy, <laughs> they too can overcome their crippling addiction to carbonated beverages. All George right. Washington never had a soda addiction. Why do you think he needed false teeth? He's got a point. Why not divide it up equally? That would never work. It's not even. Each of you could get a third of Roosevelt. I want the mustache. <laughs> I wanted the mustache. <laughs> okay, Max gets Roosevelt's mustache, Specs gets the glasses, Peepers, you get an ear and both nostrils. That just leaves me with the forehead. All right then, Wizard, we'll throw in Crazy Horse, but that's my final offer. It's not even finished. This will never work. It's just like last time. How did West Dakota become a separate state? The three of us ran for governor together. We got along so well during the campaign, and we were all such former TV celebrities that all three of us won. The voters realized they'd elected three governors for only two states. That's when the unpleasantness began. What was the unpleasantness? We fought oh, for dear. a long time about how to divide up the states. A lot happened in the last couple of no months, war. apparently. <laughs> but we divided everything up fairly and all agreed that Mount Rushmore should be in the south. We did not! You! I what? You! Oh, never mind. Hmm. Wizard seems like he might uh, have some things that he wants to say, but his inhibitions are stopping him from saying them. Perhaps if we made them him lose those inhibitions, he'd... Uh, have some looser lips, which, as they say, sink ships. Thirsty? Yes, but you're not going to offer me a soda, are you? You know I can't resist them. We wouldn't do that. We've got, let's see here, orange soda, cola, grape soda, pop, some more orange soda, and tea. Tea, tea please. We're all out of tea. Soda? <laughs> Why are you doing this? <laughs> Stay dry, Wizman. All right, let's talk to Specs, and then uh, gotta hey, get Specs. started on the. Uh, Max, you remember <clears throat> most omnipotent exaltedness, Max Sama, overseer of the nine <clears throat> cosmic planes. You remember Specs, the other soda popper. We vaguely recognize our loyal subject. What are you guys talking about? Kiss the ring. What? No. What business do you have with the president? We're here to get federal oh, resolution stuff. on a dispute. It wouldn't be a dispute if you... If I what? Nothing. Awkward. <laughs> what business do you have with the president? We're here to get federal resolution right, on a on. dispute. We it that. wouldn't be a okay. if I... Nothing. Awkward. Okay, I hate when it keeps one along. It'd be nice a quality of life change if it grayed out the ones you'd already asked, but... Oh well. What have you been up to? Winning an election. I'm now the governor of South Dakota. Because it's too eye-related, it's just, yeah, hey, he has just to like pee. <laughs> yeah. No, not just like Wither. I was the first one of us to run for office. <laughs> like you invented it. You just, ah, uh, forget it. What are you doing as governor? I'm fixing the problems in the state and getting it back to perfect working order. <laughs> Did you know that the Black Hills are really more of a greenish gray? Oh, my God. I've got a committee addressing the problem. What about the Badlands? We're making them even worse. <laughs> sing your theme song for us. No, I don't sing that anymore. I want to be respected as more than just a beloved TV celebrity. If it makes you feel better, you were never really that beloved. <laughs> Sam and I always watched your show with detached irony. <laughs> Later, Specs. All right. Okay, um... Hmm. Well... Could we possibly get into the war room as well? That's something we need to know. 
Stand aside, pal. The president needs to get into the war room. I'm afraid that's not allowed, sir. Perhaps you didn't hear our advisor. <clears throat> we would like to see our war room. No can do, sir. Orders. You can't tell the president what to do. Let us into that room. Just following orders, sir. No exceptions. We are most definitely not amused. Until I hear from Chuckles, my superior officer. I'm to guard this door. Your superior officer is riding on the shoulder of a 20-foot-tall Abraham Lincoln statue that's destroying Washington. Yeah. It's that's, covered in the contingency yeah. plan, sir. It's covered in the contingency plans. Why won't you let us into the war room again? Just following orders, sir. I can't let anyone into the room. No exceptions. It's so weird I can see his eyes now. Like Max says you can take a vacation. We will make an exception just <clears> this once. Thank you, sir, but no can do. It's Easter. I'm not a religious man, sir. I wouldn't feel right taking a vacation unless it was a secular holiday. Okay. Well, secular holiday, Roger huh? That. Let's have a look and see what, what days we can... Uh... Oh, boy! Hmm. Arbor Day, perhaps? We now declare today April 27th, Arbor Day. Everybody go outside today and hug a tree. Hug nothing? This year I'm hoping to get to second base. I do know the actual solution. I just wonder um, if this has any hey, interesting lines. Max says you can take a vacation. It's Arbor Day. I'll tell a tree, sir. Okay. We'll be back. Roger that. All right. Well, we don't need to be in here right now, I don't think. So let's head out. Where are we going, Sam? Um, we could actually after go after. That rampaging we, can, we can actually You're go after going him. Down, Abe. We can't do anything just yet, but um, we can like have a little drive around and uh, mess around with the rampaging Lincoln. He's very fast. Well, he wasn't hard to find. He just had to follow the trail of broken campaign promises. Oh That's yeah, it is all decked nice out with the. Um, I like to think presidential I seal flags now. Sam. So you can like try and uh, try and shoot him. The bullets have no effect. Oh yeah, the He's bullets made of him. marble, Max, and fueled by rage. <laughs> All right, let's go home. Where are we going, Sam? We're gonna go back to the office. Back to the office. He still Max smacks Max even though he's president. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's see how Sybil's holding up, because, uh, poor woman. She de deserves better. Hiya, Sybil. How are things in the world of computer-generated romance? Oh, I'm not doing that anymore. Can you believe that yeah, guy? Just shut, Never mentioning that he funny. was married. <laughs> Men are such self-centered jerks. Preach it, girlfriend! So you changed careers again? Yeah. Now I'm running a dating service. Um, come again? A carbon dating service. Oh. I bought this astoundingly useful machine that tells me how old things are. I usually just cut them in half and count the rings. <laughs> There's a reason you're not invited to birthday parties anymore. <laughs> I wanted a fresh start in a new career to get my mind off that fiasco with Honest Abe. This wasn't my first choice, but I got a good deal on the carbon dating equipment online, and I couldn't afford to change my sign. Hmm. You're having financial problems? I'm afraid so. After my public humiliation with Lincoln, all the applicants for my dating service demanded their money back. Not to mention all the money tied up in pending litigation with the clients who watched Max's dating video. I stated very clearly up front that viewer discretion was advised. <laughs> Believe me, I would love to just close up shop for a while and take a vacation. Forget about Honest Abe and all the lawsuits. It was a wardrobe malfunction! But unless I get a major windfall, I have to hope the carbon dating business takes off. How does carbon dating work? I don't know. Something about carbon-14 and half-lives and radiation. Oh, nice. I'm impressed with your detailed <laughs> scientific knowledge. Very professional. That's the beauty of it. I don't really need to know anything. I just aim my little machine at something and it tells me how old it is. Awesome. Allow me to demonstrate. This tiki is, oh my gosh, it's, it's 2,000 years old. This is fantastic. Old is good? Absolutely. I can have my office put on the National Register of Historic Places. I might even get a grant. I'd be rich. Hmm. 
Well, can we have that? Can we borrow your carbon dating machine? We might need it. No way! That machine is still my only chance to take care of my money problems. Unless I get a grant, since I'm now on the National Register of Historic Places. There's no way I'm letting it out of my sight. Well, we do have control of the national well, budget. So... so if we uh, maneuver some money over to her, we uh, she may take a vacation. Seven max half life three confirmed. Where are we going, Sam? Yeah, you know, that kind of reminds me. Um, that in They're season two, the there's a oh there's a joke about Duke Nukem Forever. Um, I'm not sure if it's ever a spoken joke, but there are some crates um, on Easter Island um, full of copies of a game titled DNF. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know if they'll change that to anything else. Because obviously when this game, well, when season two uh, came out, uh, Duke Nukem Forever hadn't come out, so. <laughs> Where are we going, Sam? Um, back to the office. Shotgun. There's a little bit of back and forth in this episode. It's not too bad. You can bet that'll be cut. I don't know if it'll be cut. It could still be in, but I wonder if the it's possible they might replace it with something mm, else. Sybil left the door unlocked. She's probably living it up on some tropical island on the taxpayer's dime. I bet she's getting abducted in some sleazy nightclub, forced to do unspeakable things for a power-mad despot, before narrowly escaping his volcano-top lair with only one of her kidneys left. Don't be such a pessimist, Max. Sorry, Sam. It's just no fair. We're stuck here <laughs> working, and she gets to have all the fun. All right, hold it's on. Sybil's carbon. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There we go. I feel like they'd have to reference another game that's in development hell. Like, um, I don't know, Beyond Good and Evil 2 or something. <laughs> what's another, what's the game that's currently in development hell? I mean, we can't necessarily, uh, say Half-Life 3 because technically Half-Life 3 seems to be in the works in some way. We don't know that for sure, but the end of Half-Life Alex seemed to indicate that. Anyway. The money was uh, taken over to Sybil's, but we don't actually want it at Sybil's. We want it at Bosco's. So we need to find something really old in here. I'm throwing a curveball and putting Yandere's in there. Jesus. <laughs> that would be a very pointed oh, reference, though, Mr. wouldn't President, it? President, please do not execute me. I'm sorry. But we have to do this, Bosco. <laughs> sorry. Wait, can you actually try and shoot him? I wonder what happens. That would hardly be sporting. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, let's try scanning different things, actually. Hold on. Let's see how old Bosco is. What is that? Keep that away from me. Relax, Bosco. It only tells how old you are. Why do you need to know that? Did someone send you to find out how old I am? Sheesh, never mind. That's your problem with dating, Sam. You give up too easily. <laughs> I don't want to know how old that is. I don't want to know how old that Aww, is. Come on. I don't. And the answer is the weenies, by the way. But I, I want to see if there's anything else we can scan. Wait, can we scan uh, Sam? Oh, Max. Odd, Max. Have you been dieting? Hmm. This coffee is over a month old. Oh. It's slow roasted for premium taste and maximum viscosity. The nachos are from the early 90s, but I can't get a reading on the cheese. I don't think it's organic, Sam. <laughs> I don't want to know how old that is. What about the sludge machine? I don't want to know how... Um. All right. Yeah, viscous coffee. All right, let's, let's scan these weenies. Well, Bosco, by my readings, these weenies date from the early Cretaceous period. Uh, da, it's a special bargain for you. Still tasty. Headphones today only. You don't understand. Your store is now a national historic you place. Scam you. These weenies don't are need valuable to. artifacts. Really? I mean, we've already done course. all we need to do with you in and this episode. Heritage of my people. 
Just how valuable are we talking about here? We'll get back to you on that. How old is Bosco? I think he's supposed to be kind of like in his 40s. Something like that. He's, he's, he's middle-aged. We know that much. Does it work on Hubris? Oh, that's a good question. Hmm, that's weird. It says his age is burnt sienna. <laughs> that is weird. He doesn't look a day over toe. <laughs> My god. Alright, um... Where are we, we going, Sam? We're going back to the White House. We're off to the White House. So we can oh, move boy. the budget uh, from Sybil's over to Bosco's. And you remember it's a hundred million dollars, I think. Um, so... That'll be enough to get us the uh, true serum that we need. Hello, Comrade Bosco. Hail to the chief. I don't know how I, I you love this. It, um, but I just got a huge check from the <laughs> This gun. rendition of you earned it, Bosco. Um, it's not easy to perfectly preserve the weenies USSR that theme. the discovery of fire. <laughs> not to mention the teeming microcosm growing in the bathroom. We're considering making it a national wildlife preserve. Now I can finally finish my satellite defense system. So we can have the truth serum? Sure. Let me dig it up from the labs. <laughs> this is a bottle of vodka. But it runs. Trust me. Trust me. Get a couple of shots of that in somebody, and they'll tell you all their secrets. Thanks, Bosco. Jesse James' hand. Oh, yeah, that's the scan that. Just out of interest, um, who here knows the truth about Hubliss? I don't know who, I just want to get a sort of feel for the chat who, who actually knows. <laughs> nope. Okay, fair enough. Well, no one spoil it. It's just a, a minor plot point that comes up later on. I wouldn't worry about it. It says Jesse James's hand is only 14 years old. I don't believe that. <laughs> 14. Okay, some of you do, some of you don't. Fair enough. Well, it says that Leonard is only 19 oh my God. years old. Let that be a cautionary tale to the kids about spending too much time in casinos. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know that one. Lennon is only 19. I don't want to know how old that is. I don't want... Okay. That's, uh... Distressing. I'm, I'm older than uh, Leonard Steak Charmer now. <laughs> and I have been for a few years. Okay. Um... Have our vodka. Gonna take that back to the White House. Where are we House. going, Sam? We're off to the White House. Oh boy! Are you getting a Max Squash Squongles? Oh, I need to get me one of them. I need to get the um, the boss fight figures and the the plush, if I can. It says Peepers is 34 years old. There you go. I've seen they're all 34. Hmm, Wizard's 35 oh. years old. You're never too young for adult undergarments, Wizard. I thought they were I triplets. I guess they're just stop siblings. Giving me sodas. <laughs> Says here, Specs is 35 years old. Okay. And still in short pants. Sad, really. So Peter is the youngest one. Either way. Let's try giving a vodka to the other guys for a first. drink. No thanks. I'm on an all-carb diet. No liquids. Oh god. I want the Super Bowl. Oh. Let's find that out. We wow, actually scanned the door. You're 41 years old. That's correct, sir. You don't look a day over 25. What's your secret? I spent a lot of the day motionless in front of the door, sir. Keeps me young. <laughs> That's great. Oh. 
we get a different response from the the dead? I don't know. Careful, I think you're going to change the, the birthday not, thing in a later episode. All right. Well, let's. Are you guys ready uh, for the best moments? Care for a drink? It's soda, right? You brought more soda. Sure, why not? Yeah, it was season two. That is a big bottle. Oh my god. Drinking it straight as well. Wow! That's got more kick than the Jesus. other ones. Thanks, Sam and Max. You guys. You guys are my best friends. Now, can we, we get once fed back you a to the deliberation? Cake. What's the point? You still think Peeper's idea is stupid. Stupid? You never told me you thought my idea was stupid. He said your idea of adding Herbert Hoover hugging the four other presidents was the stupidest thing he'd ever heard. Well, hey, I don't Hoover drink that much wasn't kiwi. even a president, which means he certainly wasn't the most loving of all the presidents. Well, at least I didn't suggest putting a parking garage in George Washington's forehead, like some four-eyed freaks I know. You little... You big... <laughs> of course you realize. This means war. war! Oh! War! Oh, those shutters and you? Here we go. I'm gonna keep quiet for this. What's this I hear? What wondrous thing? Is this the Defcon Klaxon's ring? A flashing light above the door. There's just one thing it could mean. This is the absolute moment I was sold on the game. Oh, the lighting. I love how absurd this all is. <laughs> Here we go. I just I just remember experiencing this for the first time. Like years ago, and I was just like, What? Lighting is all like red now. Oh, I like that. Oh, uh, wait. Hey, soups. Why won't you let us into the war room again? Hmm. Just following orders, sir. I can't let anyone into the room. No exceptions. Okay, so we've activated uh, the war thing. We'll we need Roger to. Um... Yeah, we we basically we need to give him a reason to get away from the door. Oh, look at that, a ribbon. It's the Secretary of Presidential Whimsy Ribbon. Looks like Max can use this to appoint someone as an honorary cabinet secretary. Oh, look at that. 
How would you like to be a secretary, Super Bowl? Max, I mean His Excellency El Jefe Maximilian I, Intimidator of the Realm, has a special exactly, surprise Frank. for you. Yes. Better get those handkerchiefs ready. This could get sentimental. Agent Superball, we have decided to reward you for your excellent service to your country, for your unwavering commitment to preventing us from being where we most desperately needed to be, <laughs> for your unerring devotion to being a constant hindrance in our task. For all these things and more, we now dub thee Superball. Um, I like this one. Secretary of the Interior. We already have one of those. Oh, exterior? We have one of those, too. Fine, Secretary of the Posterior. <laughs> <laughs> so we have spoken, so it shall be. All uh, hail, Max. I'm overwhelmed, sir. I don't know what to say. <laughs> now run along to a cabinet meeting. I'm afraid I can't do that, sir. You've got to be kidding me. I still have my orders. I think you can actually take the ribbon back as well. He looks sad. Hold on. <laughs> I'm not a secretary, sir. That was fun! But we do actually need to keep it on him. Max, I mean his ex- okay. Agent Superball, we have for your un- for your- for all these things- Um, let's try, uh, meats and cheeses. Secretary of meats and cheeses. All hail Max. I think posterior is, yeah, it's the cannon one. Oh boy! And... Secretary Day. We now declare today, April 26th, Secretary's Day. Perfect. That's supposed to be Administrative Professionals Day. Wow, Sam. When I picked you for vice president, I didn't know you were such a politically correct bleeding heart liberal. <laughs> All right, then. <laughs> Secretary's Day. Oh, I love that line. Hey, Soups. Today is Secretary's Day. You have to take the day off. It's the law, Jack. A vacation. Permission to weep openly, sir. Not just granted, but encouraged. The forces of bureaucracy win again. I love this country. All right, the war room. Hey, there's a dunce cap. Where are we going, Sam? Oh. No place. Never mind. Huh. You can access the Zoro from this room? Was that always the thing? It's a plate of fancy cookies. For the discriminating general with a sweet tooth I didn't, and I, I had no idea that was even a thing. <laughs> At least it, it must be, it's either a new thing or it's something I never noticed before. Hey, there's gourmet coffee. In case the idea of war makes you insufficiently jittery. I'm plenty juiced just being in here. Let's blow stuff up. Hear that this doesn't looks like a remote um, homing beacon in the frigid Antarctic. So peaceful, so serene. Want to blow it up? You have to ask. Yeah, I think this screen is supposed to show different things. Um, Dinner special tonight: penguin flambe. <laughs> Who would have suspected the Washington Monument is really a self-replenishing supply of intercontinental ballistic missiles? It's good to see it used for something more useful than corny innuendo for once. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if this will have a significant impact on our delicate ecosystem. Yeah, the, um, Absolutely. My ego is bigger already. There's a bug there where the screen doesn't change. It's actually supposed to show like a different um, a different thing where it has estimated target or it shows like a different thing that goes on. But it, it seems to be broken at the moment. Hopefully they'll fix that. The homing beacon to the Kremlin doesn't seem to be working. It was probably turned off in the spirit of Glasnost. More likely those lazy commie bastards forgot to change around the batteries. It show the right thing. Lazy okay. former commie bastards, Max. It's the distant, peaceful world of Krypton. They mock us with their utopian society of crystal cities and absentee parents. They must <laughs> be exterminated! Hello? Excuse me. Oh, the stream's been going for over three hours. This is a longer episode, I think. This'll teach him to put me in the Phantom Zone. <laughs> You will bow down before me. Ah, it's supposed Better to say, um, buddy. Well, I'll, if I second around, I should. Yeah. Well, what do you know? Bosco was right. The government really has been targeting his store for destruction. Thank you, Cozy. Won't he be glad when we tell him? <laughs> what do you say we keep this to ourselves, Max? You're right. 
We don't want to ruin the surprise. I, I do love that, like, Bosco is uh, really paranoid that the government has been watching him, and then you find out that he actually has. They actually have been, I mean. All right, there we go. It's So when you loop back around, it does show the right ones. So that's what it's supposed to show for Antarctica. Beacon destroyed. So we just blew up Antarctica. And Krypton, estimated time of impact, 26 million years. Um, can we actually try and fire at Bosco's? Attention, Bosco shoppers. Clean up in aisle everything. Oh, wow. Would you look at that? Bosco's satellite defense system actually works. Oh, damn. Well played, Bosco. You're safe. But for how long? Actually, I re I'm not sure if that if that was in the original, but there's like a little uh, sort of note of um, the theme from when you're on the moon in episode six there, which is a pretty cute detail. Either way, now that we know there's a beacon there, maybe we'll be able to take it and move around. That was always there. Gotcha. I don't think I've, ever, I've actually tried that because I was always afraid I'd, I'd actually blow up Bosco and I didn't want to do that. <laughs> I like that guy too much. Inter I already interact with the Desoto. It just works like as it. Okay, I'll do it next time I'm in there. See if it does something. Where are we going, Sam? Going back, back to the to office. Back to the office. Shotgun! It acts like you've just interacted with the car, so. Uh, okay, point this way. <laughs> I love how Sam's ears flap as he's running around. It's cute. Tibetan monk clan bag ends in riots. Uh, let's have a look. Look, stuck to the camera. That must be the homing beacon for the intercontinental ballistic missiles aimed at Bosco's store. What was that? Uh, he said, that must be the best price on baby wipes I've ever seen. <laughs> All right. Almost done now. Where are we going, Sam? And uh, we're going to the White You're House. Off to the White House. Oh boy! Actually, we're in the wrong place. Whoops. You know, I can try interacting with the Desoto, actually. Why not? I didn't actually mean to do that, but... If it works as uh, as anticipated. Actually, I wonder what the um, boss goes... Uh, when, while you're holding the thing. Where are we going, Sam? Actually. No place. Never mind. Hold on. I want to try this. I want to see what, this, what happens here. The picture's black. I guess that's because the targeting beacon is in my pocket. I'm not pushing that while the targeting <laughs> beacon is in my pocket. I just wanted to see what, if, what it would say. Okay. Where are we going, Sam? After that rampaging Lincoln. Yes! Okay, so you can just interact with the, the uh, Desoto from the screen. Oh, and then they get in the car there! Oh, that's cute! Oh, I like that. That is cute. Alright. Let's just uh, toss this on. Nice toss, Max. We'd better act fast before he manages to knock off the beacon. Or choose his own back off to escape. Alright. Where are we going, Sam? Back to the White House. We're off to the White House. Oh boy! Almost there now. <clears throat> I like how Max walks with like, his hands behind his back. That's cute. <laughs> All right. Let's do this. Looks like the targeting beacon is still stuck on Lincoln. This is a pretty impressive temper tantrum, Sam. 
At this rate, he'll have enslaved <laughs> all of D.C. and most of Baltimore by tomorrow morning. He can't. You're right, Max. Still, I think we should stop him. We haven't got anything better to do. Let's do it. Mr. President? Don't mind if I do. Yeah, I did walk that way in the original, but Wait, I just I like that detail. Shouldn't we revel a little? We don't want to miss this. For all to my bidding, I am the most powerful presidential monument ever created! Oh, not quite, buddy. Oh, wow, it actually looked like a pile of, uh... Concrete now rather than just like a, a mush like it was in the original. Whee! That was better than feeding laxatives to pigeons on parade days. We broke two presidents in one afternoon. A personal best. <laughs> well, it looks like the country is saved, at least from mass hypnosis. What do you want to do now? Let's abuse my powers as leader of the free world to squeeze the middle class until they're burning their own shoes for heat. Sounds fun, but I was thinking we could treat ourselves to some chocolate frosted gut bombs and then have a little target practice down to the Smithsonian. Sam, you're my best friend. Agent Chuckles report. Query status. Lincoln Gambit. Four score stroke seven. Query Pretty sure he was supposed to be buried in some kind of thing though. Error. 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 Hmm. Oh. Oh. John Cadia is raided with a party of 20. How are you guys doing? I, I regret to say we've just finished, um... <laughs> just, well, just finished up, uh... Episode 4 of uh, Simon Max Season 1. <laughs> but thank you nonetheless. I haven't had a, a raid like that in a while. What have you guys been playing? Been watching my YouTube channel for a while. Oh, thank you for saying that. Very really nice. Yeah, I just um, just playing the new Salmon Max remaster on here um, at the moment. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think I'll be streaming for too much longer because I've just finished this episode and I'm not sure if I necessarily have time to start another one. <laughs> Working on Legend of Zelda: Link's Awakening. Oh, awesome! Uh, is that the new one or the original? I said a new one. It came out like last year, didn't it? Still relatively new. <laughs> I do like the uh, the flags on the car in this episode. It's cool. Remake. First time play playing it. Okay. I need to play it myself. And thank you for the follow, Phantasma two six two four. All right. I'll I'll read the synopsis of the next episode. Won't start it yet though. I think this is one of the ones that's been like remastered more because like it used to look a little bit kind of um, just not great, but like the updates are made to like the virtual world and this one look really cool. How did you like this game? Never played a Simon Max game? Oh, I love the Simon Max games. Like I'm a big fan of the point and click genre because of this season of Simon Max. So it's super exciting that they've remastered it uh, with like new lighting and all that. It's just really cool. Um, and thank you for the follow, Atha Khan. Oh, you, it's a good time to pick this one up and play it, is what I'm saying. So, with an internet crisis looming and a viral video game holding its players hostage, Sam and Max will need to slip into a new reality to set things right. But can the freelance players crack this virtual case in time to avoid worldwide, worldwide system failure? Uh, it's a very cool episode. Um, kind of shakes things up a little bit as well, which is really cool. Um, because you have the sort of virtual version of the city streets and all that. Um, so it makes, it kind of adds like a sort of different spin on the environment. And there's some, it does some really interesting stuff. It does need an update for a few bugs, yeah. There are a couple bugs in this season, but like nothing game breaking. Just kind of visual errors. Um, a couple of audio bugs as well. And that's pretty much it. Change the world. My final message. Goodbye. Uh, but yeah, unfortunately I, I don't actually have time to start a new episode. Thank you for the follow, Dodonti and Lost God Taje. Um, I'm gonna switch over to my full cam. Don't expect them to be fixed. I, I wouldn't say that. Uh, I'm 
I think I think they might get fixed. Might not. Hopefully they will. All right. Let's see. Who's still going then? Um, it's almost midnight here. Oh, well, it looks like Oceans is doing some Minecraft. Um, yeah, unfortunately you're late, Itamar. Uh, we're about to just raid uh, raid Oceans now. Oh, I did get a raid from uh, John Cady, which was lovely. All right. Well, I've got you here. Uh, yeah, we'll be raiding Oceans. Who's doing some Minecraft? He's a good friend of mine. He's in. He's a uh, uh, very, very cool dude. Um, my next stream will be next Tuesday, where I'll be playing some more TF2. Um, and I'll be continuing and finishing Salmon Max Season 1 on uh, Thursday next week. So that'll be episodes 5 and 6 of this season. Um, so yeah, let's get this raid in Oceans. The raid phrase will be Abe Lincoln Must Die. Um, and let's see how this goes. All right. All right, then. I'll see you guys next time. Take care.